Broads. Broads. I want to like cue in romance music. I know. That was so good. We're going to get claimed on YouTube. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Please don't come for us. <laughs> don't demonetize. <laughs> oh, well, this, mm, mm-hmm. this episode has a lot to cover and a lot of questions that I have. I, I, I'm 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 perplexed about certain things. I don't know how to feel about other things. I'm thrilled. <laughs> First I'm of all, absolutely well, thrilled. I was I got like surprised by a lot of things in this episode, like yeah. little things that I thought were going to be one way that weren't, mm-hmm. and like it didn't really go how I how I was expecting things to play out. I also thought there were a lot of little bombs that were dropped all of a sudden, where you were like, "Oh, they knew this, and he didn't, and what, what, and like." Just random things that I felt like if you would have not been listening for half of a second, you would have missed it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had to rewatch. Hopefully you guys can say, hopefully you caught those because I don't know if I did. (laughs) Same. So maybe the bras are going to have to help us out. (laughs) Fill some, fill some blanks. While we were furiously no taking and taking quotes down quotations. We have to do our housekeeping like now because I am chomping at the bit to get into it because I just have. Yes. Housekeeping. I'm thrilled. First and foremost, we have to announce some new merch. Oh my God. Another broad design. Design. Her name is Megan Tamanis, and that last name is spelled T I M A N U S. MeganTamanis.com, also at Megan Tamanis. This broad came in hot, sent us a design without us even contacting her, and we were like, Can we please pay you? Can we use this for this merch? This merch Can is we? so cool. It's so fire. We have a don't spoil me. We also have hashtag Barbara Gate, which is my most uh-huh. favorite with a crying eye. It's like very tattoo style. Our R is going to come in before next week because I want to wear them for Barbara Gate. That's the plan we must wear them for barber gate so order your barber gates now so curious what that's even gonna be about my god um i have some ideas i yeah and have some theories now but uh so yes follow her and thank you megan <laughs> and go ahead and get those orders in because hopefully it'll come there broads there uh, we're not just saying this just at least hit up our instagram page it'll be at the link in the bio and you just want to at least see it and appreciate this yes. art because it's just <laughs> dope and us audibly explaining it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do, do it, it justice, justice. <laughs> so um also barbara that. is spelt correctly yes she spells her name barbara b-a-r-b-r-a there's no a in the middle Who peter's knows? grandparents blame them blame them but, but we have it spelled the, right. the spelling is correct um so yes thank you so much megan so many talented broads crazy also also what? yes please what were you gonna say i was gonna say we got an official casting call in the middle of this episode for the senior citizen bachelor so oh, it's official yes. I'm so excited. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> well, it's been on, it's been on like casting networks for weeks now. I saw that, but seeing it actually associated with The Bachelor and I'm just like, who is going to be the lead? I can't even wait. Now, or I Or is it going to be like Bachelor Pad or like, you oh, know. I hope it's like standard The Bachelor. Like a, a uh, yeah. We have like a. Like An a, old man and all well, of like his some foxy go- ladies. Some gorgeous like 70 year old woman who's like once an actress and she's like covered in Ooh. furs and cigarettes and she's like so fancy and all these like gentlemen callers. I so want to know I'm what so kind excited. of group dates they're going to put them in because the liability factor with this show <laughs> is just on another level. They can't have them skydiving and shit. <gasps> or will they? <laughs> More than. Side <Sideways> waivers <laughs> away. Yeah, I was going to say that they're older and wiser. These, these people are going to be like, um, <laughs> My insurance is not going to cover a skydiving uh, accident. Uh, can I go in this machine with this pacemaker? Oh like my there, God. Every be, date's just going to be sitting down to have some wine. Probably. They just have paramedics on deck at all times. Like that's going to be the most expensive set. I mean, they can't be on the bachelor mansion either. Cause there's so many stairs. Oh yeah. They're going to have, I mean, to I'm have not like saying a, these people are all going to be like 88, <laughs> but still, but we have to think ahead. Come on, make sure ABC, ABC, if my Nana's fit, but if she doesn't have her glasses on, she's going to fall down one small step and I'll just ask ABC have have this. Replacement. We may have thought of the idea. I don't know. Becca and I really were hitting for this like eight months ago. And now all of a sudden it's come to fruition. I want my Nana to be on it so bad. Oh I God, told her, too. I said, carry on the legacy. <laughs> And she's, <gasps> and she's got yes. such a good personality and such a good camera presence. And she's got probably like the worst sob stories ever. 
but I mean, she won't do it. Really? I'll keep working on her, but I'm thrilled. I'm going to try to work on my grandma, but her accent is so thick. They'd have to caption her the whole time. And then I know <laughs> how to give her shit. And Lord knows she's not ready to date. She goes and visits my sweet grandfather's grave. And she always oh. complains about the men hitting on her all the time. I'm like, okay, Nana, we see you how and your is, double Fs. What's the minimum? <laughs> I don't know. 60? I don't, I don't know 65? if they had... I didn't even know if I saw the age. I, I didn't did catch it. I did see one... I think it's 65. Okay. I'm That's so excited. That's getting up there. I'm so excited. I'm thrilled. My mom is a couple more years and she could have gone on. <laughs> I was going to say, how old's her mom again? <laughs> she could come in as like the blonde, long-haired, like younger one. Ooh, mama. Also, broads. Broads, 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 broads. If you've been listening mm-hmm. to this season and our recaps, and if you've enjoyed it just a smidgen, please, hey, get out your phone right now, what unless happened? you're driving. Yeah, don't do that. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to hit the purple podcasts app icon. Mm-hmm. You're going to go click on our podcast, which should already be up, and then you're going to scroll to the bottom. I like this tutorial. And you're just going to tap to rate the rating that you feel which hopefully is five stars and boom that all took me less than 30 seconds and it would just be really appreciated and for some reason we've been getting some weird reviews (laughs) that don't seem like they're correct like someone said we spoiled the ending of the show which no one even knows the ending of the show So i don't know how that was possible but hey here we are (laughs) yeah so anyway if you've enjoyed if maddie can hit a million followers before her fantasy sweet episode even aired we can hit a million ratings (laughs) (laughs) oh geez i wouldn't bet money on that but hey you know (laughs) you know what we can shoot for the stars it's much appreciated and if you Mm -hmm. want you don't even have to write a review like with words you can Mm -hmm. literally just tap stars to rate and put in like zero effort or yeah. you can write us a review which we'll love to <laughs> but anyway thank you broads in advance thank you so much um and also before we get officially into it um i will say this i'm not going to say who it is because i do not want to spoil it but there is tea floating around that there is going to be some people missing Absentees. at the women tell all and it's not people who were like cut the first night yeah i think they're kind of unexpected they're very unexpected. So that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you know, nah, we'll, t- we'll get into more. We'll, we'll, we'll have a deeper conversation about who we think is going to be the bachelorette. Okay. But uh, apparently like reality, Steve said that there, and this isn't a spoiler. No. Reality, Steve said that there were basically, he posted a thing about how there's more dates added to Hannah B's like live debut with Dancing yeah, with which the Stars. Yeah, which you can find everywhere. Yeah, which will conflict with filming. So it looks like she's not going to be the Bachelorette. Not unless ABC decides to go, you know, have throw us a total curveball and it's a Bachelorette on the road. Bachelorette road Honestly, rules. <laughs> when Reality Steve posted that, I was like, that doesn't necessarily Bachelorette, mean it's impossible. Bachelorette tour bus style. It'll be just like Rock of Love where they or, travel around in a tour bus. Or literally they're like, and now we're going to Cleveland and she's, she's going to be like, I have to perform tonight, but then we'll be back. You know what? I will be this. honest. Uh, that would be kind of fun. That would be a fun twist. It would be cool. It would be a fun twist. But I think they still need to like separate her from reality. I think so that so she can too. be fully invested in finding her husband. She will find him dancing on the road. I believe it. I believe it. Mm. I believe in you, Hannah B. So You're going to find your man's in New York or something. New well, York. I don't really know who's going to be the bachelorette now i don't know but actually i do have some theories after this episode which i didn't have before Same. so let's get into it let's get into it so we start out right in the thick of it right in the thick of it peter has just given his uh top three roses and maddie is overcome with stress because now all of a sudden it's fantasy week and what is she supposed to do because they have not had that conversation. I also definitely thought this conversation was going to be about her being a virgin, not about her expectations. I'm going to be real with you. I was very thrown off that it wasn't that. Although very I, thrown off. I was glad that she said something the week before because the way previews had made it look, I thought that she wasn't going to tell him about it being a deal breaker thing until the night of. And I'm like, well, that's not exa- like if he doesn't know, then yeah, but, but still with this conversation, I didn't feel like it was super clear and we'll get, I agree. We'll, we all, well, it all, it all starts off when we see Victoria jacking off her rose, worried about why Maddie's <laughs> here. Not, but then Hannah and started doing it shortly <laughs> after too. And they're both doing this weird, like rose like, ladies, ladies, <laughs> 
ready for the next week. <laughs> it's been a minute since anybody's gotten some action. The rose are, like, roses are getting more action. These stems are just really... I was just like, did, did only I notice that? I'm glad nope, you saw I it too. too. They um, also weren't that far away from the other girls, it didn't seem, in the mm-hmm, hangar. Mm-hmm. They were just pulled aside. And they also had this weird thing where the way that the editing was done is we saw Peter and with like Maddie on his lap for like, 30 seconds while she was talking over and we weren't seeing what was actually happening in the conversation Mm. so much of me is wondering how much was maybe cut out of this okay yeah that's that's perceptive well yes because she starts out with saying like i want to be honest about who i am but then we never get her saying that she you know that she's a virgin said which is fine but uh, yeah i was just confused that that was omitted yes my biggest thing with this is that, and Becca and I have talked about it before, is that there's no, you don't have to tell someone that you're a virgin. Like, I don't feel like it's necessary for Maddie to say that to Peter. The caveat right. part of that is I am not going to have sex until I get married. That seems like something that's important to communicate with someone sure. before sure. you're getting into sure. a relationship with them, especially if you know the person is sexually active. Yeah, and then... So she she drops that it would be really hard for her to move forward if he sleeps with someone else. And then did you notice Peter kept kept using the specific term if I spend the night with someone? No. And I'm like, "Honey, she's not talking about curling up in bed and you know that too." Like he he sort of is like twisting it back on her where he keeps being like, mm-hmm. "You mean I can't spend the night with someone?" And I'm like, no, bro. You know she's just saying she doesn't want you to fuck other there people. Was, there was numerous times in this episode throughout this part of the conversation and especially in the in their specific date where Peter used some language. There were moments where I was like, yes, Peter, so respectful and communicative. And then there were moments where I was like, Peter's language is like felt, skewing it. And especially towards the end when he was trying to get her to stay, I was kind of like, yo, Peter, this is not. Yeah, I had some issues with the language. But yeah, spending the night, it just was saying worded. That, and I'm like, well, you're not talking about having a sleepover. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think she cares if you just, like, spend the night. Mm-hmm. Like, you, I, I don't know. The whole conversation itself was very unclear. It was. And and I, for a second, I was like, does he not understand what she's saying? Well, and he kept being, yeah, he kept asking Because he her. said, do you want me to end this with everyone else? <laughs> and I'm like, no, she's just saying. She doesn't want you to, like have sex with other people like he's he's not saying end it yes and she is but over and over again she's not specifically telling him that she's going to leave if he has sex with the other women um which yeah which i can understand why like you don't want to tell someone that but then also if you can't move forward with the relationship then you do have to say that yeah i felt like it it was it seemed like when they then had their their uh date portion it was being talked about like she had made it very clear yes so that's the issue i had too is Mm -hmm. because in her interviews later on too she says something to the effect of like i made it very clear that i am done and i'm like no right and again unless we were missing chunks sure of this and it was edited a certain way I went back and I like rewatched this part specifically because I'm like, did I miss that? Maybe she did say something specific or that looked like it was edited or anything. And I didn't pick up on that. It seemed like she was in a stressed position because she's like, I don't, she kept saying like, yeah, I don't want to give you an an ultimatum. ultimatum. I don't want to tell you what to do, but, and then at the very end when he kept saying like, Hey, uh, uh, are you saying that you you can't move forward? Are you saying, and she just kind of would sit there and kind of be like, well, yeah, no, I think what but- happened is she came in like assured of what she wanted to communicate. And mm-hmm. then I don't blame her for this kind of started backtracking, maybe watering it down a little bit. Well, and she even said when they have their one-on-one dinner that she was like, I wasn't planning on saying those things to you. Mm. And she was upset with how she came across. She was like, I was disappointed afterwards because I didn't, you know, I didn't like how maybe, or she, she apologized kind of for, for the way that she put certain things. But then she said that she wasn't planning on saying these things. And I felt like you could kind of tell in this conversation. But, but then at the same time, I was like, well, so how do you then actually feel about it? Like, can you move forward like this didn't make it clear to me right me neither so when they cut to later and peter does it and she's 
angry at him, I'm a little bit like, well, definitely you, you told him that you didn't want him to do it, but it wasn't clear that you were going to leave. Right. And also, but then, yeah, it's catch 22. Cause then also understandably, like if you're going to say, I'm going to leave, then it's kind of like, well, you're putting me in a position like, and Right. I might have to say bye to you right now because I'm not going to set like I'm, I'm not. so curious if she would have said that what he would have done in if in this moment she would have said hey I will leave if you because even that moment where he goes <laughs> where you just said he's like you want me to just end all this you know and he didn't sound he wasn't saying it like in a crazy way he sounded like it was kind of like okay like well let's talk about well this. I felt I think that if even she had made I, I don't think he would have like I don't think he, and and I'm changing my opinion now than before. Before I would have said like, yeah, he would have like set that boundary. And if he knew he was going to fuck things up with Madison, he wouldn't have sex with them. And he would like pick her. I'm not so convinced Mm -mm. after this episode. And I actually think that if, and I think that she was perceiving it too, that if she gave a hard, I'm going to leave, it might've been like, well then see yourself out right now. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. Like <laughs> what well, he, he even said when she when she was having that conversation with him initially, he says that he doesn't think it's fair to the other relationships. Yes. Um, but he and he's like, I want you to know how much you mean to me, but at the same time, like they do too. <laughs> yeah, and he also seemed to go fully into his like you know. He said he was nervous and thinking about it, but it sure didn't seem that way on his other two dates. I'll just say no. that. I will say that. He didn't seem riddled with guilt. I, nope. And he seemed like Madison and her preferences were the furthest thing from his mind it was going like into he, both of those days. He blacked out from horniness for 48 hours and then he saw Maddie and was like, oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> yeah. I also I think that, that, I think that they both weren't really on the same page because I think that he was sort of like, she's gonna chill, chill out on it. This right. is just a heat of the moment thing. Right, because I think he, that he underestimated. He probably was, I'm assuming this, maybe taking on and remembering what it was like to be in the roles reverse yeah. position going, oh, I remember that feeling like, oh, please, I don't want you to have sex with uh, with Luke or um, or Tyler or whatever, when, but how Peter was feeling with uh, Hannah. But I do think this whole conversation would have looked different if in that moment she told him that, I don't want you to sleep with the other women because I am waiting to have sex until I'm married. Yeah. Because I think then he would have taken it in more with more of a serious tone or been like, I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah, maybe. But then also their conversation later on, oh, he's, yeah. he sort of makes it clear, like, look, you got your values and I have mine. I know. And that's kind of, she, oh, she played herself. Like she, she accidentally put herself in a position where I think like at the end, she was kind of like, fuck. Well, and I think too, all I could think about was her parents watching. And then when Peter comes back and is trying to being like, you don't think this means enough. And is trying to like be like <laughs> the little sex devil on her shoulder. Be like, come on, come on, come on what her parents are thinking watching this back all i'm thinking is oh my god what if her and peter are together right now and her parents are watching there is going to be some arguments in that house yeah because and i'm sure that's in her mind can't blame her of like i gotta stand like her old community you know and she's one of the pruitts that's so much pressure but Mm -hmm. also again and again throughout this episode and i will keep saying this over and over later when we discuss it why did you come on the show? Yeah. I, that, that was what was just in the back of my head the entire time. The whole thing, it's like, did I think she made certain missteps in this? Yes. Yeah. Do I appreciate the way that she went about certain things? Yes. I felt very like mixed emotions, but what kept echoing is how did you end up on this show? What, what were you expecting? That's my thing. Like, especially when we hear her later say to Peter, I made sacrifices. Do you think watching you kissing other, I'm like, dude, have you ever seen the show before? Like, of course you're going to. Right. And it's also like, he didn't ask you to make those sacrifices. Like if you weren't comfortable with him kissing other people, you probably shouldn't have started dating him in this environment in the first place. You know that you're literally dating a guy who's dating 30 other women. Like, I I don't understand what you thought was going to happen. And again, right. we say it over and over, but you're going on the season with a guy who's known for fucking in the windmill. 
And all I could think about was the only person I'm like, was she there for someone else? And the only person who would have been like, quote unquote, Luke is Luke. Which I find that hard to believe. Same. Because who would have watched the show and thought Luke was going to be the bachelor? I mean, maybe it's what you, (laughs) maybe (laughs) it's, yeah, maybe it's what you, yeah. And she would have had more luck just sliding in his DMs. Oh yeah, for sure. They live in the same state. Yeah. They're practically neighbors. <laughs> uh, I think maybe it's partially what you said earlier in the season where you were like, maybe she just was like, what the heck? And then now she's like, I see him as my husband. I, I don't can't know. figure it out. I'm baffled. I'm baffled the whole time. Just not understanding what she thought was going to happen. Again, unless did, she did, was like, I'm going to, I'm going to get to the solid number six and have a, a shot at bachelorette. And I didn't think that I was going to end up here. I didn't think that I was going to have feelings for this guy. You know, I, I don't or know. Maybe she, maybe she's more intimidated now by Peter in the sense that before she thought like, we're going to get into the top four or five and I'm going to tell him, that, but she said she didn't plan. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I'm completely confused at the situation. Completely confused. She didn't seem to really have a plan prior. No, but we see then later on in the episode when Victoria and Hannah Ann are talking and they are like shocked that she hasn't told him that she's a virgin. So the girls in the house know. Yeah. And they were also, but they also both didn't realize they were also both surprised that she was sort of giving him that ultimatum. Yes, they, they were, were like, surprised. whoa, 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 whoa. They were surprised by the ult- ultimatum, but they they uh, knew about her being a virgin, which is then an interesting dynamic to me that she's holding off telling Peter, but she's telling all the girls in the house. But I don't know if she's telling all the girls in the house. I think it might've been the conversation like within the past week where she was like, I, I'm just nervous about this next week because I, I personally am saving myself for marriage. Got it. And yeah. ha- have it be more of like a personal conversation with like Hannah Ann and Victoria. Yeah. The other yeah. girls true, who true, are. True, 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 true. Because remember, everyone was, kind, they were both kind of like, why are you tripping? Right. And yeah. I don't know. Wait, no, but she didn't see them before that rose ceremony because they were on the hometowns. Yeah. So she would have had to tell them in the top, like in, in the week when there were seven people. Unless she told Victoria when, uh, when we didn't like see it. Like at the rose ceremony? No, like, you know, when her and Victoria were talking during Hannah Ann's date. Because Hannah Ann went first and Victoria was asking Maddie if she's okay. Right. But so did the girls not know when they were talking in the hangar? Because that was. I th- I think she. Well, no, that's true. Because Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, because they said, oh, and then Victoria was like, oh, did she tell him? And Hannah Ann was like, no. Oh, OK. Oh, see what I'm saying? So, so then she would have had to tell them in like the top seven or eight. So, so they like knew. weeks before. Which, again, my thing is, it's like I get telling I get maybe feeling more comfortable with like the girls you're hanging out with every single day. Sure. These are the things that I want for my life, you know. Whatever. Yeah, and maybe they're all sitting around talking late at night about yeah. like what have you done, whatever this or that. And sure, she's like, oh, sure, I'm a, sure, like sure. I actually am. It saving is just myself. very interesting to me because we haven't ever seen, I think, on the show ever someone hold on to that this far into the game. Yeah, like again, not it's not for me having to do anything with the fact that she's not telling him she's a virgin. It's all about the fact that she's like, I'm not going to sleep with you until you and I are married. That's well, I, I, I haven't heard that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that this late into the game, which kind of, I, I sort of understand. I'm sort of like props to you in that way, but only if she's going to get to the fantasy suites night or whatever, and then be like, I, I really want to let you know that this is what I'm doing, but it's very different where she's the angle she's coming at it with, mm-hmm. which is like, I don't want to be with you if you've so anyway. Okay. Yeah. Well, Oh gosh. All right. Well, before we get into, uh, them getting all the way to Australia, mm-hmm. um, listen, I cannot think of anything better than someone telling me that I smell amazing and wanting to know what fragrance I'm wearing. It actually changes my day, puts a little pride and pep in my step. And on the contrary, I can't think of anything worse than that moment when you realize that you stink. Oh my gosh. Mm. The worst feeling you're out somewhere and you're like, uh, Uh uh-oh, that's me. Um, The anxiety of it all. Seriously, smell is so important. It is, after all, your most powerful sense. 
Finding the scent that you love can be really hard though. And not to mention full-size bottles don't run cheap. No, not at all, especially the really nice ones. But thanks to Scentbird, you have the ability to try any scent you want in a convenient 30-day supply size. And Scentbird is a luxury fragrance subscription service. Um, So you're getting the best colognes and perfumes with more than 500 designer brands for you to choose from. Uh, recently from Scentbird, my two favorite scents are a little throwback, a little classic, a little old school. I went Viva La Juicy. And it's da- good. It's so good. And Daisy by Marc Jacobs. I've worn both of those. Yes, yeah. right. I was feeling my like college, high school mm-hmm. self again. And because of Scentbird, I can mix them up depending on my mood or occasion. I'm full on Viva La Juicy, sexy velour sweatpant lifestyle mm-hmm. for Friday night out. And then day-to-day Marc Jacobs, Daisy, sweet loving wife energy. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, Scentbird lets me keep all my favorites on rotation without breaking the bank. Scentbird's offering an exclusive deal just for our listeners too. 30% off your first month. So that's only 10 bucks for your first fragrance. You just have to go to scentbird.com slash chatty and use promo code chatty at checkout for 30% off your first month. Again, that's S C E N T scent bird B I R D.com slash chatty promo code chatty to get your first scent for $10. Well, speaking of throwback teen years, um, when I was a teenager, I, honest to God, thought that once you were an adult, your skin just knew you were past puberty and it would be clear and glowy Ah. all of the time. (laughs) I have no idea where that came from, but I can assure you it's not the case. Beautiful skin requires care, but... um, that does not just mean that it has to cost a ton or take 19 products a day. No, BioClarity is simple, affordable, and uses only natural and gentle ingredients that you can feel good about putting on your skin. Jess and I both love their products, and we cannot say enough about how their products have uh, really improved our skin for the better. BioClarity is clean and green, and their products are uniquely formulated to help nourish the skin with clean, plant-based ingredients great for people with sensitive skin like myself Mm -hmm. so i've been using their essentials routine for a few months now and i have absolutely been loving it especially loving the super special ingredient found only in bioclarity products floralux which is made from the chlorophyll from plants it helps with redness hyperpigmentation and evening out skin tone and texture and it is a game changer but I just recently tried their brand new exfoliating and brightening mask called Brighten Up Sunshine, and I am hooked. The ingredients are vitamin C, pineapple, coconut, boom, that's it. I love when you can actually just list the ingredients on the front of the product and you don't need the 30 items on the back. Uh, the ingredient list on the back. BioClarity is so clean and green, and this mask leaves me shining like damn glowy and leaves my skin tight like a drum like i'm 18 years old again bless if you want simple skin care routine for more radiant healthy skin go to bioclarity.com right now you can save 15 percent off everything on their website by using promo code chatty at checkout um so we start up again in australia 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 and um peter is immediately talking in an accent and listen makes me dry up more than i knew and Mm. do i do it is it a double standard for sure but thank god we (laughs) haven't seen any of them interacting with each other with fake accents because well i mean we kind of did it for a hot moment (laughs) uh peter's talking about that he's tense after maddie dropped the bomb Oh, he, by the way, he looks like at Obama at the end of his second term. He has, he is losing faith in the process. His <laughs> grays are coming in. His skin is aging. He needs bio clarity to keep him looking youthful because the man is one day away from looking 45. I swear to God, I saw a little, um, uh, interview clip of him recently right now. And he looks like youthful again Yeah, compared to what we just watched. I mean, he genuinely looks like he's aged 10 I have to say, I think I find weathered Pete so much sexier. So much sexier. Like, 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 I never thought he was, he wasn't my type. But but now him getting more cynical, more suspicious, he's more, (laughs) he's bitter. Yeah. (laughs) He is a scar. He's been, yeah. He doesn't give a shit anymore. He's just going to have sex with everybody. He's put through (laughs) trials and tribulations and he doesn't have time for anyone's shit. He may not even listen to his mother at this point. Mm. Who even knows? He might go fully off the rails and go against Barbara. So hot. Nothing like a man (laughs) revolting from his mother to get me wet. (laughs) And to uh, speak in an accent that's not truly his to dry me up. Um, So 
Here we see the girls are all in the same bungalow. Like, wow, producers are the most evil. They've never done this, right? That is... They've never done this, right? That's horrible. They, I don't think they've ever done it. Tell no. me tr Bachelor trivia dress. No, I don't... Bitch, you... I Can just, you imagine? No! <laughs> well, I mean, we saw that... The dynamic between them when they all first came in was the most awkward moment of this entire season. They're just like, what is happening? <laughs> They're all so thrown off. You can tell that none of them knew that they were going to be in the same room. They all uh -huh. thought they were walking into an empty hotel room. That is so mean. You're already so nervous about this uh, uh, fantasy suite date. I feel like you can't imagine like even like a guy I was hooking up with casually. Mm -mm. If I had to like stay overnight with two other women that he was banging and I knew that they were going to bang him while you're jet lagged, <laughs> I would just be like, what? And then on top of that, if you're actually wanting to marry this guy. Oh my God. Okay. Well, all right. So they're, they're chatting. Yeah. So the budget is low. Apparently they have to cram him into one room. <laughs> um, and oh, oh by the way, we find out that Victoria F's infamous are you kidding me is not about maddie revealing her virginity it's about them staying in one room so nice work fair bachelor editors <laughs> to that i say fair you know what victoria we see you we understand that are you kidding i me? love the just small talk too it's like oh you you staying here too you look so tan <laughs> <laughs> oh and then, and then it's just like maddie ask uh asks how everyone's homes to hope to whoa maddie asks how everyone's hometowns went and victoria f was like yeah great <laughs> Bitch, they don't even know. They still don't I mean, technically, know. if I was Victoria, I'd be like, I'm flexing on all y'all because he didn't even, we fought the whole fucking time and, and here he I still am. Knows me. Here I am still standing. Oh, I don't know. What did you guys do on your hometown date? Mm, Hunter Hayes came, came and performed for us. And then after that, we screamed on the steps of my parents' <laughs> house and didn't even go inside. And then he drove off and I ran down the street crying. And then the quote unquote truth shark revealed everything. Did you see this? You told me about it. Okay. So- Barads, if you did not see the girl, Marissa, the ex-girlfriend of Peter's, um, the day that the episode aired last week um, and she had her moment, she threw a party at her house and she started calling herself the truth shark because I guess the bar was like shark something. That's so cringy. And she literally had themed cupcakes that were like sharks. And then she went on all of her posts before the episode came out and did hashtag truth shark on all of her old Instagrams to like, it looks like to majorly up her Instagram following, which made a situation that didn't seem suspect suspect. Well, you called it. I was just kind of like this girl, like, come on. How embarrassing. She's trying to have her like 15 my, minutes. My thing is, Hey, if you, if you believe that this girl is a sketch fest and that she's been hurting people and Peter's your ex-boyfriend, go for it. You should definitely tell him, but to give yourself a nickname and to throw a party themed about this feels a little, it feels, it's not great taste. Oh, so you weren't so successful, sweetie. Like they didn't even, he didn't give a fuck. They also blurred out your face. <laughs> Which I would have been so pissed about. I would have been like, give me my shining moment. And, and I'm, do you think they were trying to make it look more serious? I don't know, because I know. It's like she would have, she could have signed a release. I know. I don't know, because obviously she came forward. She went on Reality Steve's podcast, I believe. And so she has no problem coming out and saying it was me. So I don't, I would only imagine they would have uh, blurred her face out or maybe she said no not knowing if victoria f was going to be like a favorite that she would have gotten tons okay. of heat for coming out maybe it was a safe smart move yeah sure um because i know remember jed's uh ex girl or well was his current girlfriend got so much heat for coming out and saying Did those she? things mm -hmm. well anyways um back to this okay so, now who really surprised me this week yeah oh 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 girl oh girl threw me for a loop miss hannah ann hannah gets ann. the first date which by the way congratulations hannah ann you get the first fuck after six weeks is that of is that the tension. spot that you would want if you were on the show hell yeah yeah i wouldn't want the first date are you kidding me I see my thing would would be I would think I would want the first date because he's finally or able. like last because last impression mm -hmm. it's like an audition though you just don't want to be in the middle you don't want to be in the middle but also it looked like because of I don't know if this was producing or not but it looked like they had literally back-to-back -back dates yes 
Poor which Peter. is not that's exhausting. how it usually is. That's so exhausting. No, they're usually separated by like a day or two. By the time he gets so, to Madison and she's like, I won't have sex with you. He's like, actually, I'm relieved. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Thank God. But because Vic, Victoria says when Hannah Ann gets back, like, actually, I'm going to go get ready for my date. And I'm like, is that just her going along with like production? And she's not. Yeah, I don't know. Because if that's the case, like. That's a lot in a row. <sighs> that's so exhausting. I mean, just like not even talking about the sex part just like lack of sleep and just like emotionally recouping for the next date right. and like uh, that's because just, you're staying up most it's of the 24 night 24 hours oh my god like of a date that's just oh, that makes me feel uh, ill i know it seems like just a lot and i think that you would almost <laughs> they're, they're you, killing him you would want like, they're killing peter <laughs> You know when you're like wine tasting, they have you smell coffee beans. Uh -huh. You need to do that. You need a day in between to like cleanse your palate. It's true. Maybe take a shower. <laughs> they, you know, like they are literally just batting him over the head with drama, throwing. The man is actually walking away from this with with physical scars. ABC. His dick's Let gonna be all raw at the end of the week. <laughs> Let him rest. Let him rest. Oh my god! You know what else I thought about is how Madison pulled Peter aside before he's been waiting to have sex for weeks. Now he's so pent up. Oh yeah, before time. <laughs> she pulls him aside then, and he's kind of like, "Are you sure? Is that what you really mean?" And then he goes and has sex. I wonder if she would have had this conversation with him if she was the first one, and he's just waiting to have sex that night. And she goes, "I'm waiting for marriage." If he would have been like, "Yeah, you gotta go." <laughs> Well, but since here's it's your the card. third, but since it's the third and he's tired and he's probably had sex two nights before, he's kind of like, no, don't you he's like stay sex in isn't everything in the relationship? Yeah, exactly. Suddenly, he's, he's like, feeling sleep that is way. fantastic too. I love just literally sleeping. You can really to just my have partner. some good conversation. I'm fine. Or just watch some TV. Do you think the producers will let that happen for us? Give us a little treat tonight. Scroll through Instagram. Oh my god. Well, yeah. So Hannah Ann. They go jet skiing. I'm just like, Peter, make sure she has a special life jacket. She's only 14. <laughs> <laughs> she though. She I have is, to say she has gorgeous paratatas. First she's of got, all. I mean, listen, she's got a gorgeous everything. Yeah. I just the the tits are like what somebody would go to their plastic surgeon and be like, I know. this is exactly what I want. And especially that want. bathing suit, that off the shoulder bathing suit top. It was, it. A, it was a great choice. She and she had like her little Daisy Dukes on before. Well, sneakers. You know, nothing, nothing to report about their actual jet scheme, but they have a conversation like talking about her family. Mm -hmm. She's crying and, right yeah, away. I know she said she, about her getting nervous. Mm -hmm. um, and then Peter says that he's falling in love with he's like when i uh sam falling in love with you i mean it um and i just i i had a moment remembering that she actually i keep forgetting that she got the first impression rose she, i know and she's been consistent through I this remembered whole thing that too and you know and then in contrast to madison's conversation she then has this whole conversation when they sit down on the beach oh by the way loved this conversation this was the nighttime portion, the girl, though, right? No, it wasn't. Uh, uh. Oh no, this is when they're this is when they're having like a little picnic okay. set up. Okay. Uh, you know we've said it before. This girl is killing the game. She is just playing her cards right, mm -hmm. and she is just labeling herself like just wifey material left and right. And she's also like opening up so much more. When they were on the jet ski, she was like whooping it up. I she was think, having a great time. <laughs> I'm starting to really, really, I mean, I haven't not liked her for, it's been a hot minute. Like I've been right. down with her for a neutral. while neutral. now. Yeah, neutral. Neutral. neutral, neutral, neutral. But after this date, especially in comparison, I'm kind of like, this is my girl. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And, and you're my girl. And I think like, I think that she, I think it helped for her to be around her family to open up more around him and feel like a lot more comfortable. I agree. I think it like kind of took things to the next level for them. I all, I think also that she, like we've said before, is not complicated enough for Peter. And I feel like Peter wants a little more of the drums, but I really think that she would probably be, they'd be good together. I think so too. And I also think like maybe he wants somebody more dramatic but he doesn't necessarily want someone more complicated because he's actually pretty simple and she's pretty simple and yeah. i was like on this date i was like oh yeah they're both like simple want the same things in life she by the way hannah ann would be the perfect uh uh pilot's wife 
I just have to say, because mm-hmm. he's going to he's going to jet off and no shade at all to her. She's going to be at home. She wants her babies. She wants her cute house. Mm-hmm. She's going to be taking her Instagram photos, washing some dishes, and she's going to be perfectly happy. She's mm-hmm. going to go out with her little girlfriends, have play dates and stuff. He'll be gone. She also seems like the kind of girl going from their night portion of the date conversation, which I won't get too much into, but she also seems like the kind of girl that's been like, yeah, well, you know how Pete is when he's like on his trips like yes. like she's just kind of yes. like turns and eyes sometimes it's just gonna be like whatever do what you have at the to end do. of the day he's coming home to me right yes. like she yes. has that attitude mm-hmm. which and i didn't kind of expect from me her. neither and it's kind of perfect it's perfect it's kind of perfect and she actually doesn't give a shit she's like as long as you're my man like whatever and it's kind of when they had that nighttime portion of the date i was like this feels very mature well, okay, so let's get into that because there's the there's the there's the beautiful montage of them making out on the beach. Her leg is oh my bu- god, popped out yes. perfectly. They are making lip love. <laughs> it's golden hour on the gold on the gold coast. It's like wow, what is this? This is everything. That conversation also it's similar to the night portion, but she was really like super supportive of him, yes. and it was just like a great way to position herself and just be like. And she said, "Whatever happens, I'm not leaving." Yes. Yes, she did. And I'm now wondering if that's foreshadowing. (sighs) Yikes. Yikes. Is Peter running off to, you know, when we see the, uh, the finale, is he running off to deal with potential things with Maddie? And is Hannah going to be like, I'm staying here no matter what? I will just say, okay, well, are we going to have a, uh ari becca lauren situation where ari chooses maddie and then he ends up going with hannah ann because he realizes that maddie and his lifestyles don't line up but hannah ann is still there like she says oh shit i didn't even consider that you know what i heard (gasps) oh my god what i remember seeing this on instagram Someone tagged me. There's these two girls who have this like crazy, <laughs> this crazy conspiracy. Theory. Yes. And it's all like uh, connected to the fact that the one season of The Bachelor that they put on Netflix was Jason's season, who is the OG of leaving his original girl for the second girl. And so they're like, is this the foreshadowing of like, are people going to go back and watch Jason's season again? Yes. And like, maybe Jason will show up with Molly at the, um, at the, after the final rose and be like, yeah, again. Yeah. And then Ari, then will be like, (laughs) and now Ari, this is the first season that Ari and Lori are covering with their little like YouTube. True. I'm, I don't know guys. I don't know. Are we going to have that? Well, and those are two of the best success stories too. Yep. New theory. <laughs> Damn. Maybe. Well, maybe the whole time. Okay, but Peter's been talking in interviews, and didn't he say in an interview, like, I knew for weeks that, like, she was the one or something like that? Yeah, but I could see him saying that. True. Just talking out of his ass. You say. Also, I have this feeling now, is Barbara, her saying, bring her home to us. This is what love stories are made of. Is that filmed after? Oh, shit. I feel like no, but I hope so. (laughs) I don't don't know. know. I'm going to say this. After watching this whole week play play out, Hannah Ann is the best choice for Peter. I agree. Like their lifestyles fit, their personalities fit, what they're both looking for fits. I actually think um, like beliefs and all that aside, I think that there could be conflict because with Madison and Peter, because I sort of see her having issues with him being gone a lot with traveling and being like, not just a spiritual leader, but like, I want someone to be a leader of the home and like be present. Well, I also see Maddie as like, Maddie seems very when you look at her mother too, very strong personality, I could see her wanting to like go and get it in life and be like, I'm going to have, I'm going to have my job and I'm going to be busy. I I don't know. I just, I mean, how is she going to do that? And like having him be absent Mm -hmm. for periods of time. I mean, I I guess I don't actually know pilot schedules, but it seems like he's on the go a lot. Yeah. I think it's, I think Uh, they're gone a lot. And I just think that fits Hannah. It's just, it works better with Hannah Ann. I agree. She's going to be like, whatever, if I have to do the carpooling and all that shit by myself, like I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And like kudos. And the fact that Peter, that she's never said I love, like she's never been in love. I feel like really lends itself to the narrative of this whole time. Peter being so scared that he's not going to find someone who truly loves him. And this is the first time Hannah Ann's ever been in love. I don't know. 
Yeah, the only thing that keeps throwing me off is how he said, I love Madison before. Yes. But I don't know if that was just like in the heat of the moment when but maybe he, he wants to Maybe he can't when have. he's ha- doing these interviews, he's saying she, Madison was the one he knew from the beginning he was going to choose, but then it doesn't work out. And then he goes after Hannah Ann because she'll always be there. I don't know. Something to think about. Something to think about. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and their love could really thrive with that. Uh huh. Oh, yes. Okay, well, so Madison and Victoria are talking back at the ranch. Yeah, they have a moment. Um, and Victoria's asking about her pulling Peter aside, if Maddie's okay. Definitely trying to dig, dig for some tea nicely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was doing the, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Spill everything, please. <laughs> um, and then Victoria, and see now this is kind of, I didn't know if Victoria at this point knew about Maddie waiting to have sex until she's married because Victoria made the comment about how the situation is hard. Just of course, in general, because you typically wouldn't be okay with your boyfriend sleeping with other girls sure. I'm like, or husband, but you know, she- <laughs> shade. Um, yeah. So we don't really get anything from Maddie mm, in that, except the fact that Maddie's no. stressed. Yeah. She's whatever. stressed now. Irrelevant conversation. Yes. Night portion of the date. Um, so Hannah Anna walks in and she is swishing that damn dress like it's the runway challenge again. She is. It was a wild. Um, also, the restaurant setup was very odd. Did you notice this? The, it was like the lighting felt like very fluorescent. It wasn't a very romantic setup at I all. I didn't notice. I was just too busy just watching them watching gazing their each dynamic. other out in each other's eyes. Um, well, Peter and her are having another wonderful conversation, and he tells Hannah Ann about the fact that her daddy was mean to him. <laughs> <laughs> but he I, also says, I like that he to- told her that. I like yeah. that they had that conversation for sure. Yeah. He also says, I feel so good about us. I could see us doing this for a lifetime. And I'm like, yeah, vacationing in Australia. I could also see myself doing that for a lifetime with literally up? anyone. <laughs> yeah, Pete, I'll go with you too. And let's just jet ski around all day. No commitments, no Sounds kids. Sounds great. <laughs> um, uh, well, down. Hannah Ann tells um, Peter that. Um, well, she tells she him. She she she's says, in love with him. Well, she says that, and then she just, I love this line. She said, it's a, I, I kind of splicing it together from two different sentences, but she says, I don't care about the details. It's about being together in the end. And I was like, yes, oh, damn. I love that. She was talking about how she hopes that this week shows how devoted she is. Um, she tells him that she wants him to do what he has to do with tears in her eyes. I was getting a kind of emotional, um, and it felt like she was literally like sending her husband off to war. I was like proud of her. Me I don't too. even know her. And I'm like, wow, I'm so proud of you, Hannah. Look at you. Look at how you've grown. She was soaring. And she says that she's okay with him needing to experience this week. Okay. I wish, like, I know that they're putting Madison last. Obviously they're fucking her over, but I wish having had this conversation that Madison was the next date. Cause there yeah. just would have been this stark contrast between the two. And it would have just, I think shaken things up even more. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Especially I feel like Peter would have been hot off this great date with Hannah Ann, probably great sex, <laughs> his first time in a hot minute and then gone straight to uh-huh. the conversation with Madison. Yeah. I think that he would have felt a lot more though. Like, Okay, go. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I feel, think he would have been like I, even more. I, I over agree it. because Victoria F obviously makes him nervous. So right. I think then seeing Madison be like, "I might leave." It's like, "Oh no, wait though. I don't know if I'm good sure. with the last one." Yeah. So you can't go, right? But then in contrast to Hannah Ann, it kind mm-hmm. of would have been like, "Yeah, okay, bye, bitch." <laughs> Seriously, I think that's how he would have felt after this totally, date. Totally. I mean, let's even just talk about their suite setup with the hot tub. Oh they made up for giving Peter that shitty little windmill room. They were like, we're going to give you a full penthouse, my friend. You have room to move your legs, stretch out. (laughs) You're not in that little cave There's a mini fridge over there. Wow. Remember when literally all that you had was that little trunk that you could open and there was things (laughs) inside that? We're going to give you spreads, charcuterie. (laughs) Like, it it was glorious. I mean, what... 
it's really funny too just when you see any season the contrast of the sweets that they give people versus like certain people versus yeah, others it's so messed like up. on ari's season ari and lauren got a suite with a hot tub literally inside the suite and he and becca were in a yurt with no running water or toilets oh you know that i would have thrown a fit if i would have been becca. i mean at the very least it's like she said that they literally had to wipe themselves with like down with baby wipes that's so messed up. I, I know. Like, so for my first time with this person, you're not even going to let me like, after all of this filming, give myself a little shout shout. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Right. And then you see someone else getting the freaking. Oh, I'd be so upset. I'd be so like upset. the true fantasy suite. Sorry. Yurt isn't a fantasy suite. I mean, I'm not trying to be uppity about it, but no, like, that's would, not my fantasy. I would love, I would I could love do that yurt. any weekend in fucking Angeles Crest. But I would love a yurt if I'm like been on a few dates with this person where I've had the opportunity to have sex with it this person. It also wasn't even like a luxury yurt. It was just in the fucking sand dunes in yeah. Peru. Also again, filming all day. The lights are on you. You are sweaty. Come on yeah damn so anyway well when hannah ann said when i look at peter it's like looking at a reflection of my heart and i wanted to start singing a disney song well and he said he said cheers he said tears to you waking up waking up to you tomorrow morning and i was like how romantic it was so romantic which by the way i'm so pissed we didn't see what their morning looked like because that's so telling they get they made us how miss could they? they made us miss this like really vital piece of the puzzle this is what helps us put everything together and i just thought like they must be on a time crunch because of madison's conversation but then they showed victoria's and i didn't care about victoria's no i want to see hannah ann's i know i was upset about it saw her walking in the door with that glow she was glowing but back before yes (laughs) victoria and madison and victoria's fucking like getting in madison's head oh my god that was so funny victoria's like well she's definitely gonna say yes to like the fantasy suite so (laughs) it's just like (laughs) victoria's just like victoria's that friend Uh where you're like i don't know you're you're talking about your ex and and she's just like well yeah he's definitely dating other people oh yeah he's absolutely having sex for sure with other girls (laughs) probably right now (laughs) (laughs) that friend you're wanting to support be like he would never he could never get over you he's obsessed with you victoria f oh no he's definitely over you he hit up me the other day actually i hit him up but you know the devil's in the details. <laughs> Who's surprised? <laughs> um, that was just hilarious, though. I, I felt sort of like Maddie and or uh, names. Victoria and Hannah Ann were both sort of like fucking with Madison. Like, I know. Not like hardcore. No, but they her, were but just sort but of they like, were definitely like poking the dragon. Like they knew that Maddie. And I think also it was a little bit of a move because they got to know she's the front runner. Yeah. There's, maybe. She has had zero drama the entire season but hannah ann hasn't really either no but she's been a I mean, little like, bit scattered in there was a the champagne gate the, the first the first episode people people didn't like her and it was i don't know yeah but she didn't know that and neither did peter i feel like she's been pretty solid yes. i don't think i don't think she would have any reason to believe that she's not but the front runner really because you're not seeing she's not seeing yeah. his time with her and she True. got the first impression rose and there's all these other different things like yeah well, I don't know. They're 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 stirring her up. That's for sure. And I felt for her because, but Lord knows, yeah. Hannah Ann's also just like confident and is you know she always kind of has been. So mm-hmm. she's just sort of like, yeah. Oh, also we find out that Hannah Ann is the hands against the glass queen. Oh my god, the, I know. And the here Titanic I scene. I think I it's his hand though. See here, I thought that they, he was just already well, hitting it from the back, like and then I, I realized, like I told you, he has his delicate monarch hands that aren't. Very, very thin True, very, and small. Like, the gender and, ambiguous yeah, hands. Yeah, you're like, are they Hannah's? Are they Peter's? Have they morphed into one? Is that because I thought it was literally someone like getting like they're yeah, but that's not what I was like. Oh yeah, they're standing making out, and he puts his hand on. But the But I'm gonna say they definitely had sex. Oh duh. Okay, okay. Because he when just we, not on camera. Because when we find out. Or when he talks to Madison later, he says he's intimate. We don't know if that was with both women, if it was with who. Well, that fan, that fantasy suite music was dramatic <laughs> as fuck. I just wrote also the music. What the fuck? I was getting swept off my feet. It was out he of control. Said, the most perfect woman I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Like I just the can <laughs> you feel the love tonight? And 
Also, you know, with like their backgrounds and everything, someone's Mm -hmm. like initial call instinct might be like, Victoria is the one who's a freak in the sheets. No, Victoria is boring as fucking bed. I'm just going to, I, that's my call. That's she thinks guess. she's really hot and she's probably like, no, I don't want to No, Like she's probably, I can see her being kind of fussy or just like, you know, whatever going through the motions. Yes. She might be. You think, she's you probably think, like good in bed. Whatever. You think Hannah I Ann's think the Hannah queen. Ann though is a freak. Yes. <laughs> I really do. Like Hannah Ann is going to be like, I have one goal, and that is to please my man. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, I just have a feeling <laughs> that she was fully prepared to rock oh my his world. She comes and rolls in with a little tote bag, and he's like, are those your clothes? And she goes, no, they're the toys. <laughs> she opens the case. I guarantee you. What's yes? your pleasure? Food play? <laughs> Like hot dogs, toppings, relish, ketchup, a little bit of mayo, spicy mayo. Mm, stop. But I guarantee, <laughs> Jess, I guarantee uh-huh. that her relationship with the guy she wasn't in love with, I guarantee she was always wanting to fuck and he was just kind of like, no, not tonight. And she'd be like, <laughs> oh, she like, like she was always a bored. I thought Brian was going to be fun. Yeah. He's and so boring. <laughs> He just always just wants to, be, yeah. He just always wants to be on top in missionary position. I'm just bored. I want to try something new, and he just wasn't down for it. And she was just and like, and now Ugh. Peter's her man because you know Peter's down for literally anything, 100. percent So she, yeah, exactly. She's like, this is my man, and he put her on every single counter in that penthouse, also, and they made love mm-hmm. all over the place. Also, she's competitive, and Madison is too. But Hannah Ann's in a competitive like eyes on the prize way where she's mm-hmm. like i'm gonna tell him doesn't matter how we get to the end as long as it's me and him <laughs> last one standing and i'm gonna prove that to him tonight oh she wants him to know in 56 fact, different positions she needs to hear that she is the best he's ever had yep yep competition baby anyway I think that night went pretty well. I think so too. And she just comes waltzing in in the morning, her little sundress. And I am so upset. I, we really are missing a huge piece when they don't show the beginning or the, the, the morning of the date. Do you remember the morning of Colton and Tasha's fantasy suite? It was the most awkward morning I've ever seen. And if we wouldn't have seen that morning, by the way, we would have thought the date went pretty well. Because it was the date was going really well. It seemed True. super romantic towards the ends, and I was like, "Wow, Tasha and Colta are really connect." Colt, Colta, Tasha and Colta, <laughs> Tasha and Colton are really connecting. And then we saw that morning where he yeah. clearly showed, you know, took off the skin suit, showed his alien form I because still, she looked shook and like they were so disconnected. I would kill a distant cousin to find out what happened. Honestly, my ultimate goal in life is to get Tasha to tell us what happened. I need. We need to invite her out for drinks. Oh, we're gonna find out. She lives in Orange County, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. She comes up here a lot. We could make it happen. We need to know. And if she tells us that we can't tell you, broads, I'm sorry. We're not gonna say anything. No, we're not gonna say shit. We just have to. But I have to know. I, I don't keep, give a shit about all you It keeps me up at night. It keeps me up at night. You know. Sometimes I wake up after some sex with Evan, and I'm just like, "What happened?" <laughs> sometimes what i just happened? wake up on a random morning and i just it's the first thing that comes into my head you know like when a song is stuck in your head when you wake up you're just in the middle of sleeping deep sleep <gasps> <laughs> like a nightmare oh my god what happened we all america needs to know i need to know Tasha colton gate well um so we see maddie is still clearly unraveling yeah. and um man she needs she, you know you know she is when when Hannah Ann walks in and she's like, how did it go? You know, all she wants to do is ask her if they had sex. She's like, just write me a note and pass it across the table. I beg and you. And goes, it went, went really well. And then there's just silence, like radio silence, deafening silence. Like they're just staring at each other. Oh, my God. I was obsessed. It was everything. <laughs> All right. Well, before we get into oh, uh, God, the Victoria F portion of the uh, oh, of yeah. the episode, um, here's the deal, broads. When you think of brands like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Rolex, Cartier, you don't usually think ninety percent off or getting any deal in general. Nope. Well, now you will. 
because The Real Real is the leading reseller of authenticated luxury consignment across all categories. I'm talking luxury, streetwear, fine jewelry, watches, art, and basically everything you could possibly want. I have been looking for a little Gucci waist belt, not going to lie. <gasps> yep, yep, yep. And so I've been trolling The Real Real almost every day uh, looking for just the right one in my size because they have such a good selection of them. And the deals are Yes. Pretty crazy on yes. Gucci. And Gucci is a hot commodity right now. So I'm always shocked at how like intense the deals are for such a hot commodity. Also, yes, it's leather and yes, I'm vegetarian this year, but it's consignment, which means it's used. Yep. So, you know, love the consignment. Love that. Piece. Um, and after buying designer at 90% off, it's going to feel wrong to purchase full price. Plus mm -hmm. buying secondhand is a more sustainable option, kind of like we're saying. And, uh, much more sustainable than purchasing brand new. So try hopping onto their website or app and try not to scroll for hours on end. Like I said, <laughs> hours, <laughs> I dare you. Um, they have so many incredible pieces for crazy deals and they're getting new items in constantly. Shopping consignment for luxury items is one of my favorite things because this girl loves a deal. I love the hunt. Um, but I sometimes find myself asking, is this really designer? Mm. There are some good fakes out there broads and it's hard to know what to look for unless you've been special trained well thanks to the real reels 100 plus brand specialist gemologist horologist art curators you never have to second guess again it's never too good to be true never it just is good and true facts. and real real facts <laughs> because every piece is meticulously authenticated so you don't or so you can shop with confidence and remember you can be creative on the real real you don't have to just think about getting some designer clothing pieces you can check out engagement rings like we've talked about decorative home pieces is a housewarming gift for a friend or a scarf for your kid's favorite teacher really really slam dunk this year you know at the end of the year make sure that you get that good teacher next year get that good grade with that Versace scarf for Ember's teacher make sure that Ember's getting A's you know what I'm saying um, so all sorts of purchases can um or excuse me all sorts of purchases you can make sustainably there are tons of options you can shop at any of their three physical locations which is, I haven't been to yet, but I'm so oh, stoked too. We oh, should do a trip. We really should um, because online, of ooh. course, or download the app at, um, and get 20% off of select items with code real. I've used it myself. Just head to the real, real.com and enter promo code real at checkout for 20% off of select items. All righty. Okay. So, so second Victoria. Date. Well, I knew that I, I told you in my bones, I knew Maddie was going to have the last one of course. because, because we all know that he had to have sex with Victoria. I know <laughs> he had to, this was his, this was the one I, I, I genuinely believe it that this was the one person he really wanted to have sex with. Yeah. I mean, they fight so much. He he fights so I think like much. if anything, he's just super curious. Yeah. Like he has to be. Is this yeah, all like, worth it? <laughs> yeah. What what is this crazy chemistry that makes us so angry yeah. at each other? Is it just because we want to have sex and then everything's gonna be fine? We're never gonna argue again. We just have to get that out there. I don't know. It's crazy they hadn't talked since Virginia Beach. That is wild. Like he well, can he immediate immediately out the gate, just right away says, I just want you to know that I trust you fully and I fully have your back. I was like, he has to tell her that? I know. I'm like, well, but Peter, what does this mean? If you trust her fully, so you just think everyone's lying? I don't understand. It's again, it's the same pattern like the Victoria P. I I mean, I guess there only, are no one, answers. only one person said anything and it was just like his ex being super cryptic. True. True. He doesn't know all the tea yet. He only had one random ex from years ago say anything. And so he's probably yeah. like, I'm going to blow it off. And, and then he apologizes to her. He says, I see the fight in you too. And I'm like, yeah, duh. You see the fight in her every fucking time you guys are together. You see the fight and the flight because bitch runs away every yes. single time. <laughs> um, yeah. He apologizes. What a trip. What I would like to make note of my friends is that Victoria F hops in that helicopter. No problem. Says, this is so cool. Cut back to her flipping out before she gets in a small plane. I know. And he literally, they lit, they make it even worse because he later is like, did you like it? She's like, it's great. 
There is no fear in her eyes. She is not. I'm like, girl, if you're going to run with a story, she let's keep the story going. It, okay. With her plane ride. It's one of those things you just, you do it once and you're never afraid of it again. It's like going on that scary I roller coaster. I guess it coaster. didn't work though with the skydiving. The skydiving. The first time. Her past skydiving, what was it? 2015. It really didn't work for no. her. You know, she was still afraid of the planes. Here we are. I, I literally was like, seriously, she's not even going to just show a little glimmer of fear a little hold on to him tighter like oh gosh it's a little scary i know come on <laughs> and i don't even hate her anymore either no i didn't stand I, her before and now i'm just like whatever i just it's one of those things where i'm like this is this is a hot mess and i'm really curious to hear what she is going to say after this is all over me too you know damn well there's a fire between them and peter says it's never going to be a boring relationship and i'm like oh yeah okay so now you're admitting that this uh dysfunction is what's keeping the passion alive glad you're glad you're sort of recognizing at least you're it. Rec- well he, can, he says too <laughs> i love everything about my relationship with victoria except when it comes to communicating and i'm like well this is gonna be a difficult relationship <laughs> that's gonna be an interesting marriage if the one problem you have is the talking part all right um <laughs> like okay peter um but yeah i mean th- oh this is when excuse me this is when he this is when they're sitting and talking by the waterfall yes yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. saying that he feels horrible about well, her hometown and he's apologizing yeah and he's <laughs> some of these lines were just cracking me up he just says i have not had any other relationship that's been tried as much as our ours has and i'm like you guys you're acting like you guys have been uh put through the fire like with these you know deaths in the family like no it's literally you two creating you guys all of this chaos and friction all this shit and it's like no it's it's like you yeah exactly like, there's no like you said situation you putting nothing happened through. she keeps running away it's literally the first you month of their her. relationship i guess that what they've been through is an ex showing up and another ex showing up they've been through a lot <gasps> well and when she she said when i'm in i don't stop fighting i don't give up and i'm like i haven't gotten that impression i beg to based differ. on the past however many weeks that we've watched you threaten to leave every single time i beg to differ when every single week you say i don't know if i can do this oh wait no he said when i'm in i don't stop fighting and i don't give up and she goes me too <laughs> like, no well and he said he's grateful she didn't give up oh, and i'm like God. well i just feel like there was a lot of that being forced i don't know well one of them says too then this has been going great so far and i'm like wow a whole three hours of peace can you imagine <laughs> they're not used to no it no one has raised their voice yet that's incredible i love how she though even comments she's like we haven't even fought <laughs> wait like, until you guys fucking live in the same home together i'm just have like a child you guys together. have spent a grand total of maybe at one like one full like 24 hours together you know yes. if you'd separate everything human, yeah maybe maybe two maybe two days and you have fought more than most people fight in the first six months of their relationship just imagine just imagine i can't um i can't also T about the um the piece of Victoria that we try not to talk about but it's constantly talked about. Um I want to say that um in the past like 2 weeks a few broads have slipped into my DMs and um it's continued to be confirmed that for Virginia Beach it's a small they're like everybody really knows it's a smaller community it is a fact that this ha- like I'm, I'm just saying what these broads have said it is a fact everyone knows that she has done these things open knowledge it's, it's open knowledge which is why when they had the date in her hometown there were a lot of people that showed up to talk and producers were kind of weeding through things and and um well, they're like okay who can talk to him oh one of his exes oh your Perfect. ex shows up amazing yeah so it's 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 confirmed and and i think i'm curious because does because she still live there i don't like, know what? well victoria victoria um has denied it at the beginning and i'm very curious to see if she's going to continue to deny it especially after reality steve has interviewed a few of the women now i know the women haven't specifically come out we're talking about these rumors by the way of her breaking up marriages which yes. is now yeah and um, talked about on the show and she 
uh, is saying she's denying it, but there's women who have come forward, talked to Reality Steve, have been interviewed by him. Um, but a lot of the women won't come forward because after seeing the backlash that Jed's ex got, uh-huh. I've heard that they've told him that they don't want to even also deal like with that. maybe some of them are still with their husbands. Very true. So like, who wants to bring more of that drama to? And honestly, like if Victoria F is gallivanting around virginia beach i just want to say this no shade to you if you live in virginia beach but wow your dudes sound shitty (laughs) because all these married men apparently okay not gonna be going there to find my second husband did you see i think lauren posted on her story but did you see that they ate the exact same place ari and lauren did on their date in the hometowns i i I ended up seeing some or maybe it was on a meme or something like I saw it somewhere. I saw that too. And apparently Lauren's like mother and or her mother was there because she used to live there and they know about the tea with Victoria too. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. That's, Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Dude, that's crazy. So it's like widely known. Wow. Yeah. Well, back at the ranch, back Madison the ranch. and Hannah Ann are talking. Yes. And she's explaining that she vocalized boundaries. Yes. Which... Was, debatable it was debatable uh, again it, we don't know about the editing of the conversation though. of course um but from what we got it was more of a i would prefer this also the ter- <sighs> I, w- I i do want to go back because we didn't say this the phrasing that maddie used at the very end when he was like i need you to tell me exactly like are you gonna leave can you do this yeah she said to him i don't want to give you an ultimatum but for me actions speak louder than words and that's how she left it off which That's is so not vague. which is very vague it's like i it to me if someone would tell me actions speak louder the words to me i'd be like okay you don't want me to but this isn't a i'm leaving for sure if you do this so i'm like i'm gonna go have sex and then we'll catch we'll catch up later i mean you and i have talked about this before with like uh like open relationships and stuff but if at the end of sleeping with all three of us and i get chosen that i'm like good then that means either a I was the best at sex or B, (laughs) which is the more hopeful situation. Our relationship trumps whatever hot sex he was having with anyone else. Yes. And like, I feel secure. That would be something at the end of this show in general, regardless of my, like where, what I felt sexually, I'd be like, Oh, if you chose me at the end, that's the action speaking louder than the words, right? Is the choosing of the person I would imagine, which is kind of what Hannah Ann was communicating in her conversation. Yes. Anyway, but in that conversation, um hannah is looking at maddie with the most skeptical shady <laughs> eyes she's literally just like okay. she's like well he went down on me for about an hour and a half so i don't know if that meets your standards you that know you what's speak so of. funny is i wasn't thinking about the fact that she for sure has had sex with peter already and and victoria uh, excuse me maddie is saying this to her oh yeah and you know that again maddie is like Hannah Ann, tell me if you did it or not. Well, this actually kind of bothered me because the the phrasing that Madison's using, she keeps saying standards. Yeah, and I, so I the, wasn't. I didn't like that. So then that's also like she knows who she's talking to, which is this girl that just spent the night with him. And she keeps saying like, well, I have standards for him. I hope that he would have standards for me too. She said that. And I'm just like, it was, I was not standards okay. Standards is, is, is sort of this, uh, I'm, I mean, it's it's like a superiority thing of like, I have, well, but when you say the word standards, you're saying I have standards. Yes. Some people around here have standards. And I believe, I believe the, the term high standards was thrown at one point I wrote down and I'm like, well, you have, so you're saying like, if I have sex with him, I have low standards. I I get married, but I have low standards or if I'm okay with him having sex with other girls, I have low standards. Right. Well, and then if you're sitting there being Hannah Ann, which I don't think she like put too much thought in it, but I'd just be like, all right, bitch. So like, I guess I have low standards. Well, that's why I Peter thought she was given the face where it's kind of like, oh, you're going to really say that to me. Sure. I don't understand why, who you think I'm not a random friend. Who's not also dating <laughs> Peter. <laughs> and Madison straight up said to Hannah, she, go, she goes, Peter sleeping with someone makes me uncomfortable. That's a make or break for me. And Hannah Ann is probably like, great. Okay, well, good to know that you're out the door. (laughs) I'm so glad to know that it's going to be Victoria and I in the top two, apparently, because whoopsie. Well, then we see Hannah and in the interview, two sayings like we knew what we were signing up for. Yes, I I enjoyed that little clip of her. Yeah, she goes, wait a sec. (laughs) 
Victoria and my actions with Peter is going to be a deciding factor for you. You know what you signed up for coming into this? And then she goes, it's madness. <laughs> <laughs> I live for him. All of a sudden, Hannah Ann has had sex with Peter. She's like a philosopher. It's madness, I tell you. <laughs> madness. Um. Goes back to sipping her martini. Just like, mm. I didn't used to drink, but now I do. Now I do. Yeah, exactly. Now I'll take an actual swig of my champagne. Uh, I'm a woman now. <laughs> I'm no longer 14. A woman. I'm a woman. I'm worldly. I know things. I've seen things. So what about like, what about, you know, what about Hannah Ann for Bachelorette if he doesn't choose her? You know what? After, um, after this episode, I'd be down. I still don't think it would happen. Like, I don't feel like they would do it, but I don't until this episode, I didn't feel like she was maybe dynamic enough, but she's also one of those ones that I could see when the ball's in her court and she's in charge that she would maybe, yeah, her more of her personality would come I agree. out and she put, could be put a good bachelorette. in situations with the men. I can see her having a bit more of a no fuss attitude. Personally, I would prefer a bachelorette who's a little older because I yeah. feel like then all the men are going to be like 21. For sure. And, and God the cycle knows, is just going to get younger I don't know if I want to watch 21 year old dudes. No, I feel that for sure. You know what I mean? I for sure feel I'm, that. I'm way more down to watch. Isn't she 24? 22? 23? 23, I think. Okay. And I'm, and you know, they always have a mix of a little older and a little younger. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually fine watching a mix. Like I'm down with some of these girls who are like in like 21 or 22, yeah. but when it comes to guys, sorry, I don't know if no, that's I like completely full agree. sexist, but it's just like, dude, I, I don't want to watch the 21 year old men just just they're not even fully through puberty well male <laughs> puberty ends at like 25 or 26 their voices are still cracking and i just imagine a group of 21 year old dudes with like their <laughs> testosterone through the roof getting into fights like physical altercations <sighs> constantly and i i don't need that you know i need a little, i want a little no gray in the also beard. it's like they might believe they're ready and maybe some of them are but i am much less inclined to believe a 20 year old man that says he's ready to get married Agreed. Sorry about it. Sorry, boys. Sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry boys. Sorry, boys. <laughs> no, they're boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Victoria's night portion of the date. Okay, now this is a romantic atmosphere, and her dress is just... Ugh, the cleavage situation going on. The girl knows how to pick a dress. She knows how to pick a dress. You, if you want to say anything about she Victoria. She may not name them, but like <laughs> Hannah Ann. She may not have the ability to give all of them sweet, sweet names, but... I was a little surprised by this too. She brings up that she had a three and a half year relationship where he basically didn't ask about her feelings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, so I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. I, um, I mean, it was no surprise that there was a moment where we, we thought she was about to run away again. She got real close. I was kind of like, are we seriously doing this? Okay. But actually, so wait, so I want to get get to that point because, yeah. okay, first of all, Peter said some line that I wrote it down and I rewinded it and I did not know what the fuck he was saying. No, I did the same thing. It was what like, was he that was like, line? No, no, no. This is what he said. Her. He said, there's nothing you need to work on where there's no issues. That should be your natural chemistry with people. What does that mean? I don't know what that there's means. There's nothing you need to work on where there's no issues. That should be your natural chemistry with people. I just couldn't decipher what he I was can't, trying to my, say. Am I, like, I, I feel dumb right now. Is it, my brain just not processing I was just it? like, is he trying to say that... This is like a word chemistry, Say it again. Say it again. Chemistry <laughs> should be easy. There's nothing you need to work on where there's no issues. So yeah, if there's no issues, there's nothing to work on. Okay. 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 That got, doesn't got seem the, to be the case with your relationship with Victoria. <laughs> Understood. And then he said, that should be your natural chemistry with people. Yeah, no, I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> I don't know if he was trying to say like the chemistry should be easy and you shouldn't I don't, you shouldn't have to work on the chemistry on that part I don't, or like I don't like know. if you have chemistry with people there's gonna be issues to work out i don't okay, wow i don't understand so, so the part where she felt like she was gonna run away she talks about how in the past she didn't feel good enough yes and he starts prodding and goes there's a reason you didn't feel good enough like oh no he's fully prodding her and he's like he wants her sob story well and because he's like why didn't you feel good enough let's get to the bottom of it and it's like that's not something that you can necessarily like he wants her sob story and i think victoria to be honest is the only one who hasn't given us one sure i mean her sure. having a three and a half year relationship where he didn't really ask is the closest thing and so peter's like 
tell me why. And I, and I believe I'm 99% sure that, um, you know, hometowns, which Victoria did not have, or the, the family portion with Peter is that her grandmother, I believe raised her. And so I don't mm. think her parents are in the picture. So it sounds like there's, you know, probably something that she could bring up, but she doesn't want to, and right. he will not not let her well, do right, it. Right. And he's like, well, so why didn't you feel good enough though? Let's get to the bottom of it. And I'm like, first of all, that's a really hard thing to like pick apart about why you didn't feel good enough secondly maybe she just doesn't feel comfortable talking about it right now and he's just like well why why yeah maybe she doesn't want to say it on camera <laughs> just maybe wait maybe, till yeah, later wait two hours and he was pretty intense when he, he was asking he was he, he got, like, was it's like he got angry all of a sudden like oh we're gonna do this again so i think for someone who's already defensive i felt like it was pretty fair for her to feel cornered and she was like i don't know what you want for me and i was like okay that seems fair she's now she's now feeling inadequate again because yes. now she can't give him an answer and that's not good enough for him because he wants an answer so it's like i can see how that exacerbated her <laughs> yeah. her insecurity and he then is coming in hot when she says i want you to tell me what i need to give you like spill it yeah. all and he comes in so there's nothing you need to work on when you aren't faced with issues what i need is a hundred percent confidence to know i can always count on you and always lean on you so when i say something even if it's uh, the wrong way uh you're able to not have it piss you off okay it, which is legitimate right but it was just i the point is is this specific part of the conversation made me so uncomfortable like i was so uncomfortable yeah I, I'm going to say this. I don't know for sure, obviously, what the dynamic is going to be with um, with Madison, if she's going to leave. And if obviously yeah. she leaves, he's stuck with Victoria and Hannah Ann. But after this one on one date, seeing that they had fun together and laughed. But then this chunk and even though they were good and then they woke up and they were laughing, I was like, I don't think he's choosing her for top three. No, it just made me feel we like this just, just feels off. Well, <sighs> But then he said, I think he said this. I didn't write down if it was her or him that said it. Um, I don't want things to be monotone or easy. That's true. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah. that, all right, obviously. And I was like, well, I mean, there's a difference between monotone and just a shit show. <laughs> right. Like your relationship doesn't have to be like pulling teeth all the yeah, time like you can have a to not be you boring. can choose someone who's a little sparkly or will call you out in your bullshit sometimes and it's not going to be monotone yeah like i'm sure hannah and his relationship won't be boring no and you saw that during their date and it could be easy too yeah you saw that during their date they have fun together they laugh together they're passionate with yeah. sexually you can see together yeah. it's not boring it's not monotone this is just a mess. I, I you know. guys just, it's, it's watching two people who have literally complete opposite communication styles trying to make it work. Or one person in the relationship that has no communication that, style. That would be more correct. Zero communication, you know, gaslighting central, temptation to gaslight on 100 mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. And then someone who's just like, I need to know all your deepest emotions always and i want you to cry right which yeah exactly which also even for someone who has uh, uh communication skills might not be right no. like <laughs> it's funny because sometimes i say like you know i sort of the same thing of like i want someone to like be more inquisitive but no i'd be like stop no i'd be like i don't like <laughs> there's just too many questions you're digging too deep i know i haven't cried in three weeks it's because i've been happy and content with us and, and with my life I like right to now. cry alone when I'm in the shower or driving in the car. I don't like to always cry looking into someone's eyes. Yeah, it's like cry porn. Like you have to save your tears until yeah. you're with him so that Listen, you can you get off on Listen, you selfish asshole. <laughs> I like to look in the mirror and see myself cry. It's for me. It's not and always for you. I want to bask in my loneliness. It's not for you to just drink my tears constantly. Well, they go into their suite and it looks like a shitty Airbnb. Did you notice that? <laughs> I wrote the exact same thing down. <laughs> also, I do want to make I do want to make note that so far in this episode, he said frickin' three times. He goes, This has been so frickin' real. And I've never heard um a bachelor say frickin' talking about love more. Just I feel like thought. I feel like Hannah B said it a lot. She did. Bachelorette. Yeah, Bachelorette. Not Can you me. imagine the two of them, their conversations alone together? Peter and, and Hannah Ann, or Hannah Brown would just be like, this Oh my is, god, do you I think freaking, I freaking love you so much? Do you think that You're they use it amazing. during sex? Oh frick. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean like that. <laughs> no. 
like last night I fricked him. Oh, frick, I'm going to come. No, no. I fricked him so hard. No, last I don't mean like that. Like be like, I'm so freaking hard right now. <laughs> I feel like that's actually really probable. probable. I'm so freaking wet. Oh, my God. That should never be said outside of junior high. Oh, my God. Can you imagine uh, if you were hooking up with someone and they said that? <laughs> Stop. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I I'm want you to take your freaking clothes no, off right I'm gonna now. Do it. I'm going to do it tonight when Evan and I yes, are in bed. When we're like, having sex, I'm going to be like, <laughs> please report I'm back. So freaking ho- no, I'm please so freaking horny right now. <laughs> I want to have sex with you so freaking bad. Frick! <laughs> I couldn't even do it with a straight face. There's no, no way I could say. I'd, cra- I'd crack No, that's what you should do. You should be like, you're so freaking hard. He would for sure. He'd just go like this, and then he'd go back to it. And then if I did it again, he'd be like, "Why are you saying that?" I'm just trying to clean up my language. <laughs> oh man! Listen, that's by so the way, this funny. is not shade to all you broads who don't swear. It's just literally the idea. I say freaking exclusively at home with my parents. Yes, for sure. Or I just don't use the. I would. Ju- I just say like really. That was, you're really hard. I'll say it sometimes for sure, where I'm like, it's, it's so freaking annoying. Oh, no, that's true. I, I guess it'll I come out. I used it. to say it a ton. Yeah. I used to say it a ton. I think it's the idea of, it's not even him saying it, because he said it numerous times. No, it's the context. It's the context of it being really like, romantic. Like, I'm so freaking excited to be with you. It's, it's, it's the most romantic thing ever, and he literally says, this has been so freaking real. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Freck, scary it's staring in your eyes just has me f- Freck. That is so embarrassing. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> back to their weird Airbnb. Yeah, just omit it from your conversation. It like you know you know in what a I mean? romantic it, context. Right, 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 right. Listen, you best believe sometimes I'll be on a roller coaster, I'll be like, Freck! <laughs> This is so freaking fast. I definitely use it where I'm like, that's so freaking stupid. Yeah, I definitely sure. use it. No, I definitely. I caught myself the other day. I said it. I was talking. I was irritated. I was like, this is so freaking annoying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In that kind of context, I use it a lot because sometimes saying fucking is way too it aggressive. Feels too intense. If you're like, this is fucking annoying. Then yeah, it's like, like, whoa, oh, I don't really mean it. That's that super annoying. Aggressive. It's just like a little annoying yeah. and I'm a little irritated, freaking, but I'm not uh, furious. Yes. yes furious. Yes, yes. <laughs> madness <laughs> it's madness it's i tell madness. you by the way peter makes every girl read the date card he won't read it he always he goes here open this and passes it to him <laughs> like a creep surprise <laughs> hey you read it out loud and he just watches it like this <laughs> it's really creepy he's like i can't he's like i can't wait to see what food they put in there. I requested grapes. <laughs> Ew. Oh, anyways. So, so they go in the they, shitty Airbnb. I Madison's said, unraveling. The, re- the reason, by the way, that it looks like an Airbnb is because all the furniture was like mediocre and it felt very, it felt very personal. No, the you, furniture felt personal. Wow. That is such a good call on why it felt that way. Because it was like that table was bought five years ago. And you've had that couch for a long time and they don't quite work together. Right, that table is like from Pier 1 that you got it like 30% yeah. off there in were 2015. Like, there were personal little tchotchkes kind of around and plants You're so that right. felt like they Versus had names. Like resorts and shit, you're getting like these mass like stock modern yes. items. It feels like a model home. This was definitely lived in. You're so right. I think it probably just was a shitty Airbnb. I think probably. That's so funny. Yeah, so also cut to Madison she's unraveling and yes. this is actually the part where she says uh in her interview it's a black and white situation mm-hmm. and I'm like you didn't make it seem like no, a black she and didn't. white situation so she didn't um and she said it's a it says it's a she said it's a black and white si- situation of hearts full or hearts break which I and again another are these song lyrics <laughs> another phrase that I was like having to I had to re-listen to I was like wait what does it mean black and white situation of hearts full or hearts break like black and white situation of your heart being full or your heart breaking. It was a weird way to put it through. Sounds me like song lyrics from the eighties. 
Hearts maybe. full or hearts break. <laughs> it's a black and white situation. <laughs> Don't make that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> the good, good rhyme. Thank you. I like that. Uh, um, but yeah, it's... Uh, oh, also, Maddie kept talking about how it's going to be hard for her to move forward knowing he slept with two other women. And I keep thinking, what about if he just sleeps with one? Because she kept talking about both of them. So I'm wondering if all of a sudden she finds out that it's just one, that maybe she'll be less bothered because she just kept talking about both of them. I still can't figure out why they didn't show the morning portion of Hannah Ann's date. Maybe there was so much sex happening that they just couldn't. Right. They ran right up until the end where they're like knocking on the door and they're like, guys, you got to leave. Victoria has a date today. Peter. (laughs) Hannah Ann, stop, stop it. Stop that. It's enough. (laughs) Zip up your little tote bag. (laughs) Oh, man. Um, get, some, get some clothes on you. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, okay, I have a question for you. Do you think... Oh, we see Victoria in, the inter, in her interview saying that she didn't know it was possible for someone to be so good. She's crying. She's like, I love him so much. I put him through so much. Do you think she's in love with him? Don't know. I've gone back and forth with that the whole time. Yeah. Sometimes I think she is. This was maybe the one moment that made me feel like she was. I lean more towards her, yes, being in love with him than not. Okay. This moment felt... I think, like, at least in the moment she is. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think she's manufacturing it. I think that she may get over it really quickly when she goes home kind of thing. Well, I think once she is... Now that she's watching the season, um, if he doesn't pick her, I feel like she will be... Which would really surprise me if he did now after watching this whole thing. But... um, yeah it doesn't seem like she's it going much farther, i really thought he, she might have been it but I, after this i just don't feel nope. like it is um but i do feel like sh- if she if he doesn't pick her she's home watching this every weekend or every week and i feel like she's embarrassed by him yeah totally i feel like he's too dorky for her oh yeah that's why i was saying like when they were doing the dance different yeah. dancing stuff i'm like that she's 100 percent embarrassed that ch- that hun- that chase yeah. rice is watching and him dance like she this. posted a clip on insta stories like last week and she was watching the episode with her ex-boyfriend and you know her ex-boyfriend was roasting him the whole they were time. watching it together uh-huh oh which I they could be they I, could be just buddies no i know, you know i, I mean? definitely watched an episode or two with my ex-boyfriend of, the- of of you and Ari and was he roasting Ari the entire of time course. yeah you know it's even if even if the lead's the coolest guy ever you're if your ex is sitting there he's gonna completely roast him uh-huh. and honestly Peter is pretty good like if you if you I can see the type of guys that Victoria has been with yes and 100% any of the guys she's been with are gonna roast the fuck out of Peter well she seems to have a hankering for these country musicians who are very like rough and tumble Hunky type dudes, of guys yeah mm-hmm. and uh Westlake Prince monarch hands <laughs> isn't so much no although I do always have to remember then again that I'm like oh he's a pilot that's pretty badass oh no he's I do think he's like a badass guy and I also think that he's probably the type of person who i could see him like in a bar fight situation Mm. not running away but being like hey guys let's talk this out Mm -hmm. which is just a different form Mm -hmm. of and then getting just sucker punched in the back of the (laughs) head (laughs) uh well in the morning scene i was just shocked that that they didn't kill each other i know they actually survived the night they're on good terms i was fully expecting like a colton taisha kind of situation an awkward for sure especially like after we quickly see a sleepy koala that was the first shot Mm -hmm. i'm like oh you see a sweet animal this is about to go real south Mm -hmm. (laughs) this is bad um yeah we see them in bed and they're they were all cuddled up and he says he feels like they are in such a freaking good spot quote (laughs) okay he needs to stop he needs to be stopped uh he needs to stop and she tells him she is now in love with him and she has spoken his love language um i'm pretty sure she was playing with his nipples during this part (laughs) i might have missed missed it but she was definitely telling him she was in love and playing with the nipples which i resonate with because my most favorite thing to do in bed is play with evan's nipples because it infuriates him because i flick them well grayson hates it too yeah why do they hate it even i'm like i don't know but i've also had boyfriends who love it oh really i've only had boyfriends who don't like it and i'm like get over yourself i'm rubbing these things i like trying to get them hard (laughs) 
I know. I know. I had a boyfriend that I was actually like turned on by me touching yes. his nipples and I loved I it. I liked it too. I liked to try to get him hard. And he's just like, stop. Oh. No, yeah. Grayson's like, just don't touch. Stop touching my nipples. I'm like, you need to get over I'm yourself. Like, They've got nerve endings, <laughs> stimulation, I extra promise, stimulation. I promise you're going to like this. <laughs> oh man. Um, but they seem like they have a, had a great night. Yeah. And I'm surprised. And we now hear P- Peter say that he is in love with three women and he has no idea what he's going to do. Oh, Peter. I definitely think that Victoria is not going to get much further. I don't think so either. But again, but do, is if Maddie Lee, pieces out and he just has the two of them and maybe, you know, Barbara Gate is him having Victoria and Hannah Ann and he just can't get over Maddie and he chases after her. I don't know. <sighs> So in the preview scene, we see that, you know, the two girls are standing there and are like, where's Madison? Mm -hmm. But I think that might be a tease. I don't think she's actually going to dip yet. Okay. So maybe the, I I could actually kind of believe that theory that Barbara Gate is about something else. I don't know. I think Barbara Gate's about Hannah Ann, guys. I just, I just really want it to be. I think maybe that's what it is. It just seems like they're giving away too much if they say like, you know, they've been misleading us this whole season about who it looks like different things are going to be like, I feel like they're trying to make us think that Madison has left, but maybe she hasn't. Yeah, no, that's true. I also feel like they haven't been playing up Hannah Ann being his person. Right. Which makes, which me, makes think- me think it's, it's Hannah Ann. Because the thing is, too, let's just say this whole situation is true and he does chase after Hannah Ann. Maybe it's not like a Jason Ari where he's like, I choose you, Maddie. And then he bails on the woman who loves him still. Maybe he chooses Maddie and they they, have a mutual breakup. Yeah. And they try it out. And it's just like this just isn't working for us. And then maybe on after the final rose, we find out that him and Hannah Ann have started to date. I honestly do think now watching all this, I do find it hard to believe that Peter's going to be with someone who's not going to have sex until they're married. This was my biggest issue during this entire conversation, Becca. That's all I kept thinking about was like, okay, I respect Maddie wants to do what she wants to do. I respect Peter wants to, but you guys, what we're not talking about is the big picture, not just in this moment. Okay. So that's exactly what I was kind of feeling when they first had that conversation about her faith. And I was like, dude, Peter is not on the same page and he keeps kind of thinking that like and I think he thought at this time too that she's just gonna kind of water down and it's not quite exactly how she's making it out to be but it 100% is she Mm -hmm. 100% is like firm on her beliefs and convictions and she's not gonna budge on it and I don't think he's I think he's starting to maybe figure that out I don't think I don't think he realized it and I don't think that I don't think that they're on the same page at all yeah, and I and to be honest with you, like I don't like Peter pushing her to go against what she believes in. Not. That was that was that was bugging me. I don't like it either way. I don't want him to push her. Yeah, yeah. I don't want. Th- th- it's very obvious that they're in different life places mm-hmm. and that they've chosen different life paths in terms of like spirituality and personal beliefs. Yes, and personal boundaries. Yes, and because of that, I don't see them being compatible. And for either of them to compromise doesn't really feel right. Yeah in either direction. I completely agree. So I completely, I I don't know. And I I think he might recognize that. I just don't see them working out long-term at all. I don't either. I don't know how it would like those. Peter is not like, I believe with every bone in my body that Peter is not going to be okay. Waiting to have sex until he gets married. Also just like thinking big picture about like communities and thinking about like friends and like beliefs. And that's not to say that like, all of Madison's friends are virgins and have the same beliefs, but it seems like she's in a really certain strong community. And like, what is that going to be like for her? Like, does her family, you know, not drink like we were talking. It's, Mm -hmm. it's like a, it's a cultural clash issue. Right. And, and also if this is, if she's bringing up the fact that she's going to not have sex until marriage and she's waiting until now, what other things might get brought up if he would choose her weeks down the road? I have this expectation of you. I have this expectation I believe, of you I have as this leader certain, of my as spiritual leader of the home. I have this certain political belief. Yeah. Like who knows? You know. It's very true. I'm not gonna say like that she's anti LGBT or anything like that, but like what if something like that was to get brought up yeah, and Peter's you never like, know. uh Yeah. I don't know. All right, well before, so yeah. yeah. Before we get into uh 
or sweet Maddie Peters date. Oh man. <laughs> um, here's the deal. <clears throat> I'm going to fully throw myself under the bus here, but I got to be honest when I don't get enough sleep or when I have poor quality sleep, I am the worst version of myself. Same. I'm a nightmare. Um, thank God I discovered gravity blankets, weighted blanket option a few years back. It 100% changed my sleeping life. Waking up lacking productivity and clarity are now a thing of the past. Gravity blankets are so freaking cool. I'm I'm ob- I, ooh, they're my favorite. Okay, gravity blanket in particular is the top rated weighted blanket that not only helps you fall asleep faster, but helps you stay asleep longer. And as a mom of a little one and uh, having another on the way, I can't stress how much that is music to my ears. And it's really important. Also, just like even taking a nap. And sometimes when you're a little wound up and anxious Mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing, and you can just like, this is, this is mostly how I use it. Laying down on the couch and just being able to feel that weight on top of you is really comforting and Anyway, it's wonderful. And we both have been using the products long before Chatty Broads is even an idea in our heads. And I, I really, really yeah, swear I think by I got these. Sent my, I think mine was sent to me like two, almost two years ago now. I bought mine like two or three years ago and I lecture all of my friends about it because <laughs> it changed my sleep so much. Um, their blankets use deep touch pressure stimulation, which mimics the sensation of being hugged hugged you guys does it get any better than that gravity blankets come in a variety of weights um and are now back in stock in both king and queen sizes which is amazing there's a lot of other uh companies out there that don't have them that quite that That big big, um and i'll also say this is uh as someone with anxiety and anxious sleeping patterns kind of like what you were talking about becca gravity blankets truly saved me i used to spend a lot of time rolling around thoughts racing couldn't fall asleep but as soon as i put that gravity blanket on me for the first time I knocked the heck out. It was crazy. I like to call it a thunder shirt for humans. You can learn more about gravity blankets at gravityblankets.com and use promo code chatty to get 20% off your purchase today. That's gravityblankets.com promo code chatty for 20% off the blanket that everyone's talking about. Also, what's a, what's a thunder shirt? A thunder shirt are those things that you get for a dog. So anxious dogs, they created these little, these jackets that basically like hug them. Wow. And so during like thunderstorms, I needed fireworks, that for my dog in the 4th of July. My dog would flip yeah, out. Yeah, little dogs who have had trauma and stuff, they, you put a thunder shirt on them and I've seen so many of my friends' dogs like have changed lives with them. Wow, too They're bad the we don't have a promo code for thunder shirts. Hit us up, Thunder Shirts. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you broads remember the old-fashioned sex ed classes of yesteryear? Um, I'm talking condom on the banana, the ones oh that dear. evoked fear into your heart and taught you how to prevent pregnancy at all costs. Sex ed type of classes. Um, sure, they might have been good sometimes for teaching us the tools to prevent pregnancy depending on your school. But when it comes to planning ahead for it, It's a mystery, but the folks at Modern Fertility believe now is the time for some fertility education. So that's exactly why Modern Fertility was created. It's to take some of the mystery out of your fertility. It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with just a simple finger finger prick. And then you mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. You'll get insights into how many eggs you have, hormone levels, any reproductive red flags. The results go totally in depth and they even provide one-on-one support with a fertility nurse if you need to review your results further or discuss options for next steps which is one of my favorite pieces about modern fertility you don't just get your results and have to wander around questioning aimlessly like what do these mean the nurses are so kind and helpful and answer all the questions and like we've said before this isn't just for people looking to get pregnant asap this is an incredible tool to help you plan your life moving forward whatever you may want that to look like in some cases tests like this can cost upwards of one one thousand dollars in a traditional doctor's office and plus you have to go to the doctors but with mm-hmm. modern fertility you'll get the same access to your fertility results for only 159 dollars and gets better mm-hmm. right now our listeners get 20 dollars off when you go to modernfertility.com slash chatty whether you want kids today or someday in the future you're going to want information to make the decision that's best for you so Head over to modernfertility.com slash chatty to get started today. Okay, so back at the hotel, we see Maddie's Wait, like... Wait, speaking of which, remember how yes. we everyone had the theory that 
someone was pregnant. I've, I've forgotten that thing. <laughs> like, that I would totally be forgot about that. What if that still is the thing? I know. All of a sudden Hannah someone Ann comes back is like, and is like, um, 30 weeks. <laughs> You're like, wait, wait a second. How did that happen? <laughs> Oh my God. Well, we see Maddie lecturing Hannah Ann again. I know. It's literally the same exact conversation that they had the night before, like word for word. And she's just tripping even more. Yeah. And Hannah Ann is like, it's natural. It's a natural instinct to be sad about the situation. Like, it's okay. She's trying to comfort her and also being like, you also threw some shade at me. <laughs> so I don't you know if I to, ass bitch. I don't know if I want to comfort you right now. Um, oh my God. And then that moment I was dead. Victoria F comes in and is like, you girls look so cute. I do not look cute. The second after she's entering in from for sure banging Peter. What? You girls look so cute. I do not look then cute. Then her to the answer, her answer to the question, how was it? She goes, I feel like it was productive. I can't. Also, by the way, as soon as she said, I do not look cute. Both of them were like, yeah, you do. You're so tiny. You look so skinny. And Victoria <laughs> sat down. She was like, thank you. <laughs> All I yeah oh never mind I'm gonna save my raunchy comments but yeah oh, oh my god well there then as soon as like she was saying that it was productive and it went well literally Madison in silence stands up and like levitates out of the room well, that's what I'm saying angrily. Like, is this produced because then it looks like Madison's just immediately heading into her date like I don't know but when she immediately, but when she immediately awkwardly gets up and walks away, and Hannah Ann and Victoria F are literally just like, so weird. <laughs> oh my God. And I have this this feeling like I haven't noticed them at all bonding during the process, and they're finally having their bonding moment where they're like, "Wow, she's so weird." Wait, was it the two of them that were seen like commenting back and forth on each other's? things remember how you were saying you were witnessing some of them being like friendly? no that was that was hannah ann and kelsey i saw okay that they were like fine there was a few girls but i d- i haven't noticed victoria f with hannah ann she might be I, they might be great still which I, it seemed like they were fine but a lot of the girls were like are like oh my god love you much forever kisses and you're like didn't you guys hate each other like i don't understand um but they're they're bonding over the fact that they're like can you believe how weird she is right now oh my god <laughs> They're just dying for her to leave so that they can talk smack. And yeah, and they both are like, well, we, they both know, they're both smart. They both know that each of them fucked him. Yes, they got eye contact and they had like the knowing nod of like, yes. And at this point, they are sort of united against Madison, especially when uh, Hannah Ann tells Victoria when they sit down. Oh, and you know, literally Hannah Ann is chomping at the bits. Uh Uh-huh. To tell her all the tea. I know, and she says it all casual, too. It's so <laughs> funny. Um, uh, so Maddie's one-on-one date. Uh, hey, guys, absolutely hell no. This date is my literal nightmare. I, one, didn't get the appeal of it at all. There's, It's horrifying. And actually, that's it. That's just the only thing I was going to no. say. They're scaling the side of a building that is almost 100 stories. Scaling the side <sighs> of it. I had insane anxiety just watching it. It That's was hard for me to watch it. That's the tallest it. building in LA, right? The tallest building in LA is like 90 floors or something. I think this was 90 floors. Okay. Yeah. Um, Still fucking high. That's crazy. They're talking about their relationship and I'd be like, I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck. I'm terrified. I don't care if you Madison go Madison did I don't not care. seem stoked. She was, well, I'm also thinking she's True. having anxiety about having to talk to him and thinking that he might have had sex with both of the girls meanwhile this adrenaline junkie junkie he's like chilling leaning (laughs) back against the fence like i mean he's always in the sky the breeze up here clearly heights are not an issue for peter they have a fly being in a plane versus i'm just like when they were climbing up that you could hear the wind number one you heard the stairs creaking and also there was no railing on the one side which why isn't there railing <laughs> it wouldn't hurt you know Mm-mm. why is it open Mm-mm. just for the fear of it Mm-mm. he loves it though he doesn't give a fuck no they were having their like cute we're gonna kiss on top and take a picture moment and all i was thinking of guess what walking down is gonna be even scarier <laughs> so get your smoochies out that because it was super scary horrifying um and she realizes he's the man i've just realized i'm in love with yep 
Okay. Her horror has turned. Her horror during this date has turned. <laughs> That's what to illuminated love. things for you. Okay, whatever. Being on this dangerously high building. Okay, well, the, the girls then back at home. Back to the girls. First, they start out kind of in a sweet way, but they're like, "I've never seen Madison like this." Yeah, she's struggling. She okay? She's having you a think hard she's time. okay? She's gonna mm, be okay? Yeah. Um, and then Hannah Ann brings up Maddie in her conversation, um, and she said that she was asking Maddie if she got relief moving forward, telling him about her morals with the fantasy suite. And Maddie tells Hannah Ann that she wasn't able to tell mm-hmm. him that. Mm-hmm. Instead, the conversation was about her expectations for this week and her expectations for him this week. And Victoria... And no, his expectation for intimacy. Intimacy, excuse me. And Victoria F. is literally like, what? Oh, yeah. She is not happy. And, and you know what? I got it. Because being I would, in that position I too, and yeah. being like... Well, exactly what Victoria said. She's like, it's kind of an ultimatum. And also it's asking about situations that are private. Mm -hmm. And she said she didn't tell him she was saving herself for marriage. Okay, so I want to know what expectations and why. (laughs) Because I will say this. In this situation, knowing all of Maddie's story, knowing that Maddie has not had sex and is waiting for marriage, I completely understand why she has strong feelings about him not necessarily sleeping with the other Mm -hmm. women because it makes her feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But if you remove the piece that she is a virgin, Mm -hmm. then her sitting with him was literally just like, I don't want you to have sex with anyone else. But I don't, I think it's irrelevant whether or not she's the the virgin. No, what I'm saying though, is when Victoria says, if it wasn't expectations, like what, what are the expectations then that he just doesn't have sex with us and has sex with her? Like what, what does he think going into this? Right. That's true. I didn't think about you it know, from, that, from that perspective. Yeah. Which is, it is, that's probably what he thinks is going to happen. He probably thinks he's going to have sex with Madison. Cause I was thinking about this, her and him mm. have been very touchy. They've been making out, they've been on all over each other since like their very first date. So it's not like Peter hasn't yeah, had an intimate on, relationship right, with her. And being on camera, you don't have any, um, opportunity to like cop a feel and like grab right. someone's boob or like trying to finger them so, or like these other things that would maybe give you like cues right. on how someone so being, peter's making out with her grabbing her butt and like he's probably thinking like oh she just doesn't want me to have sex with the other two but we're gonna have sex tonight so when peter's telling her i don't think it's fair to my other relationships he's probably like well i'm just gonna have sex with all of you guys <laughs> it's not fair to just not have sex or to not have sex with them, those two but just have sex with you he has no idea so you think you think he doesn't know that uh, she's a virgin. I mean, no. you, don't, you don't think he's assuming that or thinking that at all? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Again, I think that they're on different pages and he doesn't quite realize how much. I would imagine he maybe thinks she's a little bit like a Hannah Brown yep. who hasn't had sex with many yep. people. Yeah. So it's important to her, but yep. I don't think he's thinking she's a virgin. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, um, so again, they're, when they're on the night portion of the date, she is bringing up that term standards again and what it's yeah i noticed that she was drinking wine so okay. she does drink okay so maybe the sweet tea is just with the family um mm-hmm. but obviously this conversation calls for some booze honey oh, so she needed a glass gotta of wine. lubricate that conversation oh my god um so yes the, this conversation peter tells her that he's been going through a lot after what you said to me about the whole intimacy thing yes and that he's been torn because he does have two relationships and that's when she said that she walked away feeling discouraged and disappointed because the last thing she wanted to do was put him in an uncomfortable position position make him feel like there's an ultimatum like you can't do that right and then he you know which is exactly what she was saying though i know she intended i know and i I get where she's coming from because it's sort of like when when uh it's like when your man wants to go out with his friends and you're like, well, I really don't want you <laughs> That's to. That's such a good example. But I'm not, not going to tell no, you you can't. But make I'm not right going to. <laughs> I'm not going to. Exactly. I'm not going to tell you you can't because I'm not that kind of person. I'm not going to give you an ultimatum so you no, can't go I'm out with cool your friends. I'm a cool girlfriend. I, I'm not going to say But that. I'm having a really hard time tonight and it's going to be really <laughs> difficult for me if you choose to go out with your friends instead of staying with me. Girl, I am literally triggered because you are. Did you have you been hanging out in my home? You've been hearing me speak. <laughs> I do that shit. It's so bad. It's so but manipulative. You, but but you know. But in I your know, head, you're I actually know. in your head. You're actually like you're trying to be cool. Well, and you're also like 
damn, I don't want to give him an ultimatum, no. but also like, I don't want him to go. So, and he's asking me, like, but I'm also not going to just straight up say no. Yeah, so like, I'm what not the fuck do I do? I don't do? want to threaten my person, but like right. Lord knows that if he makes the wrong <laughs> decision, <laughs> I'm going to snap. <laughs> He's going to have to deal with the fury when he comes home. When I'm on the other side of the bed and my back is stiff board to him (laughs) the entire time. When I'm a quarter inch of the bed. (laughs) Oh, I hear you when you come in. (laughs) Just wait till tomorrow when I ice you. (laughs) When he walks in the door. (laughs) I drank the entire bottle of wine when you were gone. And now I'm on the edge of the bed quaking. (laughs) With rage. <sighs> but I, that's where she's at. You yeah, know, where no, she's like, I, I, hear you. I really don't want you to do this, and I'm yeah. not. But I'm, I can't tell you that you can't because then I'm. And, and she's also not even like with him. She's not even like married. You know, they're not even I like in a committed you. relationship like that. So she's like. <sighs> so I kind of feel her on that. I end feel her like, for sure, for sure. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to say it. You don't yeah. want to say it. You don't yeah. want to say it. Um, well. I'm, by the way, until she finally tells him that she's waiting to have sex until she's married, I'm wondering, is she going to say it ever? Like, because uh. they didn't talk about it the whole date. She didn't tell him when she pulled him aside. And at this point, I'm like, okay, if she isn't going to tell him this, this is going to feel weird because then she's telling him, I don't want you to have sex. Mm. He doesn't know. Mm-hmm. It, she's not being fully transparent mm-hmm. with him because now they're about to go even a step further into, into their relationship. And he's still has no idea. She's not not going to have sex with them until they're at you know uh until they're married yeah um but she does she tells him yeah she says for me growing up i made a commitment to myself i want to save myself for marriage and his face is was my favorite part of this entire th- this entire episode his face was just like this well just and you see his his the it's just like oh my god oh my god but don't react his you know he's doing don't react don't react don't oh, react yeah. and his brain's just like Rrr. oh yeah well just you know okay so then you know she's the day i marry my husband is the day he gets all of me um uh-huh. which is another little, tiny little purity culture trigger which by the way i was really trying to separate everything because i'm like look she yes. this is her decision she has the she and she has the right to ask from a partner you know, he has a right to say no, but she has the right to ask for a partner yes. to not have sex with other people. Absolutely. That's 100% and her right. I actually got a message from abroad a couple days ago in regards to this because everyone's paralleling her and Luke's conversation. Right. And I really loved this, what this broad said. Um, her name is Julia Marie. And she said, um, if you discuss the comparison between Madison and Luke P convos, I think it would be really important to bring up that the major difference between these scenarios is sexism. Men have historically patrolled women's sexualities, the purity totally. narrative. Luke's conversation was about evaluating Hannah's worth based on her sexual choices. The reverse is not true. Men have always been free to explore their sexuality and judgment. Uh, Madison's uh, conversation will presume this is before this broad saw the, the episode. Yeah. Should Madison's conversation will presumably be about her own personal choices and standing up for her sexual le- uh, comfort level as a woman. The theme is the same, but the underlying meaning is very different. Um, yeah. Which is yes, but no, because we are seeing essentially the, the, the same projecting of not projecting, but like, which I said this during Hannah season two, I know I said, I said he has the right to ask this of a partner. And I believe that with Madison too. Yes. I think she does believe to have totally the right. And I actually think that throwing around this like thing about the ultimatum is like irrelevant. She 100% has the right. And there's nothing wrong with saying, if you did have sex with the other women, I am going to leave. And she, right. and then she can leave when he says, now yes. if she's shaming him going like, that's disgusting. Like I can't believe, but I, I will say, I was, I felt the exact same way you did. The only, there was a few hiccups though in this conversation Mm. that did make me feel like when all of a sudden she did get defensive when he didn't shame her in any way. And she kind of springs back and is just like, I don't want to be shamed for what I am and who I believe. Mm. And I'm proud of what I, my standards. And that felt then a little bit like, okay, we're having this thing of like, my choice is better type of energy and like don't shame me for that well yeah and, um, and the reason i even brought up the little the purity culture trigger i was having is just because you know when she said that line the day i marry my husband is yes. the day he gets all of me and i just want to explain that like something we've talked about before mm-hmm. is like i remember you know 
know, in youth group having a model of a, of a water balloon and the pastor poking holes in it and saying like they, they did this special thing where you put Vaseline over it and then you can poke holes in it without the whole thing bursting at once. And so there was just little trickles of water coming out of this water balloon. And the pastor was like, this is like every time you have sex with someone who's not your mm-hmm. husband or your wife. And look at how you're just being drained yeah. of your value, and mm-hmm. so that that's why I say like that's a little bit of a trigger because uh, a more a popular thing in purity culture is sort of like you are you have less less of yourself to give yes. to the person that you marry no, if you have sex ab- before, absolutely, you know? and, and that was something that you know I know personally that I felt is that I had sex before I was married, and I definitely I remember going into my wedding day. Um, feeling less than than mm. some of my girlfriends who I know hadn't had because you didn't have that to give. Evan. I didn't have it to give Evan, right? And I knew a couple, a few of my closest friends had that, and I remember it being very like elevated, and I didn't have that, and I felt a lot of shame, right? Of, yeah, because of it for yeah. sure. So it, yeah, yeah. Well, he turns around and he goes, "That's not me." <laughs> he was like, just to make it very clear. <laughs> I respect the hell out of you for being able to make that commitment to yourself to save yourself from marriage. And that's such a beautiful thing in my eyes, but that's not me. We are two different people. And he says, what are your expectations for me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because she says before that she doesn't expect that two people will have the same life decisions in a relationship, which I appreciated her saying. She's like, this is my, what I decide. So then he's going, yeah, but what are, what are your expectations (laughs) for me then? And, um, I do have to commend the man. He did not blink once through this whole thing. He didn't go, whoa, whoa, what? There was no, he literally, no beat, no beat. And he was just like, I respect you. I appreciate that. It's not me. What are your expectations? (laughs) Let's cut to the chase here, girl. Well, she says, she says she would say no to an engagement. And he's like, but are you really going to walk away? Cause I'm going to you know, I'm going to have to drop some knowledge on you, some truth on you, if that's the case. Well, and, and this was the part that I was like, you know, I was trying to be really fair. And so there were certain parts of it where I was like, you know what, girl, I hear you. And I never thought about it that way. She says, you know, if a week from now you're down on one knee and six days ago you were sleeping with someone else, I was like, oh, that hit me right in the gut. I was like, listen, granted, granted, I know what I'm signing up for when I go on the show, but when you do put it in the perspective of if you've fallen in in love with someone and you find out that a few days before they proposed to you, they were sleeping with a couple people in the real world. What this scenario actually is, is hi, I'm a guy and I'm casually dating a bunch of people and I have sex with them. And then six days after I have sex with one of these people, I ask you to, um, to like go steady. You and I are just exclusive. That's the real world, not proposal. Right. Yes, I know. <laughs> and so she said that I was like, okay, I get that. No, but it seems 100% fair. It's just logical. <laughs> but so then I'm like, would she accept like a dating proposal then? I don't know. Like but does she, she said, um, she said that she wouldn't be able to say yes to an engagement, right, to or, an conti- engagement. or continue to move forward. Okay. If you've slept with other women. Okay. Well, and then it also makes me wonder does she leave and do they not get back together till like weeks or maybe even months later? And she's like, well, you know, that wasn't six days ago. That was 45 days ago. Now. That's time true. Has That's true. It's a maybe different. Yeah. Maybe they um, like, leave does the time matter. He doesn't for propose her? to her in the end because less than a year dating. ago, he was fucking Hannah B and yes. most likely other women, maybe not other women, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, but um, now she's kind of in this trap because now he's basically going to be like, so are you, you're really going to not move forward. Right. Well, then he says too, which is something that I hadn't even really con- like thought about is he's like, I hear what you're saying and I get that it makes sense. It, it makes sense to me. But in regards to details or anything that's happened with anyone else, I can't tell you that. And I'm like, oh, good, good job, Peter. For real. Because if you're in this position and you're stressed, you can be like, well, it's like, oh no, it's not. He can't just tell her who he's had sex with without their permission right this is i i don't know so i kind of disagree and i kind of felt this way too like i i I, it was unpopular but i sort of felt this way about hannah's thing too where i sort of felt like okay but if so if peter's interested in moving forward with a relationship with her he's going to have to be honest with her 
But like, I think it's but he okay. doesn't have to. Disc- I think it's okay that I think it's okay that uh, that he says I was intimate. Yes, but like he no, can't no, yeah, give yeah, her. He can't tell her who or with yeah. both or whatever no, I agree. because I agree. It's national TV, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But she wanted. De- she was like. I think she wanted to know specifically who that's the, the, that's the energy I was getting was it was like, was it both who, what happened? Did you have sex? Because intimate can not necessarily, it's not necessarily sex, right? I mean, I think they're using intimacy as a, in a, in place of saying sex. And I do feel like she has just say sex. I do feel like she has the right. If he's want, if they both want to move forward to say, have you had sex? And for him to just say yes or no. Yes. I think that that's fine for her to know. It was just more like, I saw him catch all of a sudden where he's like, in details or like what yeah. happened with anyone. I can't, I can't tell yeah. you that. Um, well, he just said, I'll be very honest. I have been intimate and that's got yes. a sting. Oh gosh. And to add insult to injury. This is the part where I was like, Peter, like the fuck you did not have to fucking say that. He goes, I can see a future with other people too this week, to be honest. I know. I'm like, Oh my God, Peter. I think the reason he said that is because he, I think, wants her to know that this wasn't just fucking. Yeah. Well, but I'm like, Dude. what I heard was, <laughs> you don't think you're so special, bitch, that I'm going to drop the other two just for you. <laughs> totally. I was shook oh when he said God. that. Like, just so you know, I feel just as seriously oh about other people. Like, you that, that he, is going to spiral You know he fucking someone. snapped a little bit, though, because when he, she was like, it's not comfortable for me to just ask that, you know? And he's like, I'm not comfortable at all right now. He was like, tweak. I know. He was, he felt a little pissed about feeling cornered. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I, I don't, I don't blame him because I think. It was like a jab that, when he said that, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. It, it, because I think, I mean, this is a bomb to drop on somebody who doesn't think that you're waiting to have sex until you're married. He thinks all that he has to worry about right now is trying to find his wife, not the fact that he's trying to find his wife and then his wife isn't going to sleep with him until she is his wife and he doesn't know if he's going to be okay with that, right? Yeah. And she, yeah, and he also has to not sleep with the other women who is considering being his wife yes because of the other girl (laughs) who's considering being his wife who doesn't exactly and then and then madison starts to say i don't want to feel like a bad person for the standards i i have Mm. and then peter said i'm not saying you're a bad person because he didn't say anything like that he didn't even he didn't even allude to that he was just she's like i'm trying to put myself in your shoes that he didn't say anything about her being a bad person and that's when she got defensive and she said i know i'm just so proud of who i am and the choices i've made and the standards i've had and it's been so freaking hard in this freaking (laughs) hard in this because i've had to look past a lot of things that i'm not okay with a guy that's kissing other women but i fought and i've gotten to this place i've sacrificed a lot and i've compromised a lot and i've pushed myself in a lot of ways that i wouldn't normally for anybody else but you're worth it and i'm fighting but this one thing that's why i voiced it to you so on on one hand i'm like yeah i get how you've like so 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 i got on one hand i was like you know what this is really fair because she has obviously like it takes a lot of effort to keep up this commitment and so i understand how she sort of feels like in this situation it would almost like cheapen the decision she's made you know but at the same time like we've been saying what show do you think you're on yes and also he didn't ask you to the word that i didn't like is compromise Well, this is okay so this was then the other half of it the first half was like i support it because i was like i get that you want someone that has the same standards as you because i understand how it would you would feel like your decision was almost like lessened or cheapened since this other person doesn't really give a fuck about like he he like uh, like thinks like wow that's cool but also like he doesn't appreciate it or hold it like maybe somebody in her christian community would sure do you know what i'm saying so i can sort of understand for her too how i'd be like you don't even appreciate this gift that i'm giving you right thing you know so i'm like i sort of get that and then on the other hand though when it's saying like i made sacrifices for you i'm like he didn't ask you to make these sacrifices and quite frankly kind of like i was just saying he doesn't really care if you made the sacrifice or not and also when you put on someone the guilt that i did this for you compromised for you it's like 
He had no idea. He didn't know. You didn't. If, if it would be one thing if if it if day one or day the first date they ever went on after they met the fam after she met his family she told him Peter listen I just want you to know this isn't comfortable for me I feel like I'm kind of compromising and sacrificing because I'm not used to this guy making out I am saving myself for marriage blah 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 okay then there'd be a little more gravity to that but he had no idea so her putting that on him I yeah. did not think was fair at all no. using those terms because. Because the other thing too is like I said she when she said this and I get that she's anxious and she her adrenaline's like through the roof yes. and so she's talking fast yes. and getting defensive but at the same time he wasn't shaming her he didn't say no. like are you kidding me you threw this out because he could have kind of made a comment and been like you're gonna throw this at me no all he didn't sudden. at all he was pretty gracious about the whole thing and I thought he handled it pretty well yeah aside from that comment that I felt like it was really unnecessary yes the shade yeah. <laughs> but he didn't snap at her <laughs> he didn't make Make her explain herself like well why didn't right. you say anything right he heard her and you know i don't know well then also she when she walks away she says he knew coming into this week because i made it very clear and he made certain decisions anyway yeah and i was like no nah, this is where no. you're stretching it way too far mm -hmm. you did not make it very clear and like this whole thing of like he made certain decisions anyway then like go like you said you were gonna do like I completely and agree. And that's where I sort of was like, you sort of put yourself in this position because now, yeah, you have to leave and you're kind of going to look like a fool. Like, I get if that. you don't. I get that she feels really hurt because she did tell him that it was going to hurt her. Yes. But. What more is there to say besides, you know, like. Yeah. It's like and you weren't. And it wasn't 100 percent clear. It was just I'm not going to like this. And. So here she is not liking it, but when she did make the comment that she did made it clear and he knew there was a chance that he'd lose me um, and I'm mad at him and, and all that. But Peter comes a running and he goes out to see her and he's, you know, wanting to talk to her and they're embracing for a really long time and he starts apologizing to yeah. her. He's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's crying. I mean, he loves her, like he said. And <laughs> he's like, I hate this situation right now that you're putting me in. <laughs> so I know how tough this is for you. I can't lose you. And I'm like, Peter, she won't have sex with you until marriage. <laughs> Let that sink in. This is not it just this one moment where your heart is hurting because this incredible, beautiful woman who you love might leave because you had sex with two other people. Like this is, think about the longevity of this. I know. And I can't just, I can't stop bringing a bigger picture. Like, no, this isn't like, I, I can't say that this is a byproduct of her waiting for marriage, but like, what is she going to feel comfortable within the bounds of well, your marriage? She, Are you guys going to be on the same page yeah, with that kind of stuff? Like, like this is stuff to talk Peter, about. She already feels like she's been compromising for you up until this point. Are you guys on the same page? I don't think so. And you don't want to be, you don't want to have a partner for your, for your sake, Peter, you don't want to be with constantly a partner. compromising themselves. Right. And then for you don't want to, and then if you love her, you don't want to put her in yes. that position where she feels like she's compromising right. and vice versa. Come on guys. Vice versa. Let's gotta yeah. We got to love each other by letting go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, so, you know, because he keeps, he, then, he's hoping she will compromise. Yeah. Cause he says, you know, like we could be together forever, but then you just said that you could see that with like he says that you know i know we could be together forever and i'm like you just said you could see that with everyone else right and she just heard him say that so then she's telling him like i feel really hurt i can't change who i am i can't change what i believe what i stand for what i need i don't want to feel bad for having that and being that and it's just like you're watching this and this is just a train wreck you're like this girl has things that she says she stands for and they're not what you stand for and that's just problematic yeah are they filming the women's hall today? I think they filmed it a couple days ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, or this week, I guess I should say. Hmm. Yeah. Um, regardless. So it looks like she's walking away. Well, she does. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess they like could leaving. I mean, I also want to say too, I, I did not like that. Peter wasn't giving her her space and that he like, I get that he's in love with her and he, it's the romance is sweeping him off his feet, but he was just apologizing to her. He knows that she's really upset and he's grabbing her going, don't walk away. I know I'm not perfect. Not even close. Oh, I know. If you could see us together forever, don't go. I know I've hurt you. I'm sorry for that, but don't walk away. Like 
It's like ju- you, that's what I'm saying. He was hoping not, that she'd just kind of like compromise and like exactly. Let it go. And I don't like that either. No, even though I'm not, I don't have her same. You that's know, that's what beliefs. I'm saying. It's that's just, what I'm saying. Everyone's they're, compromising. They're both, tr- or they're both trying to get each other to compromise. Yes, she's yes, trying yes, to make yes. him to commit to something that he's just not into. Yep, and he's and trying to get her to be. compromise what she believes in. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. So he believes one thing, she believes another thing, and they're both trying to convince each other that they should believe what the other person believes mm-hmm. so that they can continue on. But I, I hope that he sees that that's not going to. Ha- I think he's wise enough to like figure out that that's not going to have longevity. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, there's also that part of me that it's like Peter is such a ridiculous, over the top romantic, and like he says, he doesn't like it monotone. So this might have just added another Prince Charming layer to him, where he can show her how sorry he is by trying to make this change, which I don't think he ultimately will. But I could see him being like, "I'm going to prove to you I mean, that I can be what I want you to, what you want me to be." Also, if his mom is crying about Madison, like that's yeah, putting ideas into his head. This is what God wants. She brings up God, which I makes know. me think maybe Matt. Oh, I don't know. It's just not good, though. Like you said, they're both comprom- making each other compromise, and that's just not healthy. Um, I just don't think. Th- yeah, I think there's so much more than just like this basic of their lives just not being compatible. Like, yeah. I just don't see her. Like, I can just even see their dyna- like family dynamics and, like, joking about sexual stuff and, like, her just, like, not being comfortable well, yeah. with yeah, Barb that. was, like, cheering front row when she found out her son fucked four times. That's what I'm saying. And, like, kind of getting drunk together and dancing yeah. and stuff like that. It's just they're not, they're not in the same place. Mm-hmm. That's all. Um, so, schedule for the next two weeks. I was confused by that. What's so going on? I think Do we have the so I ceremony think- next week? Or is that Women Tell All? I think next week is Women Tell All. Okay. And the week after that is the finale, which is crazy. Oh, my God. How am I supposed to? This is why I always am going to Women Tell All or Men Tell All, particularly grumpy, too. Yes. Because I don't give a shit anymore about their stupid drama from five weeks ago. I want to know. I would love a Women Tell All after. Yes. I would be down with that no, once I my wanna, brain is settled. I want a Women Tell All like two or three weeks ago. You know, because it's like, no, yeah. I don't care about their dumb little fight that they had. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, this Women Tell All is going to be nuts. I think. Again, like we said, though, maybe they're friends, so it's going to be more tame, but I just feel like, what is this? What is going to happen? And I think, <sighs> and I think after the final rose is going to be real crazy Poppin'. because nobody knows what's happening so they are, you know abc is going to optimize on the fact that for the first time ever like reality steve doesn't even know they are going to drag this shit out this is going to be an eight hour finale they are going to drag it out as long as possible i can't wait i need to know what happens i know it's making me crazy i need to know that he's with hannah ann do you know that it, the, the the uh effort it's taken for me to not even like try to look for spoilers that maybe i can I find an idea of no, something like I, it's making me crazy at this point i feel like i feel like if we <laughs> figure out spoilers the next two weeks it doesn't count because we're gonna recap after we figure out what happens i'm still not gonna try i'm, I'm gonna try not to look i'm like actually getting now that you brought that up i'm getting really but tempted. we're still not gonna find out but just maybe spoilers to no, give but us I know, ideas of what's not but, gonna but happen but do you see what i'm saying so like if you know next week's women tell all we won't be talking about the ending and then when we are talking about the ending we will have already watched it true so it doesn't matter if we figure out spoilers in the that's next two true weeks. that's true oh god now it's just a test for me now I it's just like standards <laughs> do you have standards these are my standards and i will not compromise them even for you <laughs> i can't believe i'm saying this can you imagine if i fast forwarded to now like a month or go or whatever and i said i need to know that he's with hannah ann who would who'd have you thought? know what who would have thought i think what the point of the ending of this specific recap is is that year to year we always shock ourselves <laughs> because i remember being like we don't want colton to be the bachelor no. we don't like him and then by the end for some reason we really did he kind of won us over that little alien bb you know everyone's just like Han- hannah brown the bachelorette becomes everyone's favorite bachelorette wins dancing with the star like I, you never know what's gonna happen luke Luke P first episode everyone was like he's the guy yeah, except for us except for us we were like this dude's sus we did have that but we were wrong about Hannah Ann we were very wrong about Hannah Ann I, I have to scream it from the rooftops I'm so sorry Hannah Ann you know Peter, pick Hannah Ann mm-hmm. it's the right choice my friend it's the right choice the right choice for you and your scar the three of you will be very happy together 
Well, well does broads- that mean that Madison would be the bachelorette though? Because I don't particularly want that. No, I don't want that either. I just feel like that'll be. Maybe they just like, maybe she will just be heartbroken. They'll just be like, good luck in paradise. Oh, paradise could be a possibility for her. Cause I feel like making someone the bachelorette who's saving themselves for marriage or waiting to have sex until they get married. I, um, I feel like that that's just going to end up being like disrespectful in all sorts of ways. Like I people are like just going to Sh- get, I felt like hurt. Sean's was pretty respectful though. Wasn't it? Cause they like took his religion pretty some, seriously. You know what? That's true. And they Do you didn't, see what I'm they, saying? They, like, and they didn't, and they didn't, um, cause it was different than Colton's Colton, because Colton they made a shit show of it. I felt like they were respectful with Sean since they it were was respectful. religious. So I could yeah. see with Madison's about them being like, she wants a man who has standards. Like let's find that man for her. You that's know, like true. I feel like even though Sean wasn't a virgin, no, he had but, decided to not have sex. And I feel like, but they treated that all that with respect. Yeah. And I feel like they could. I feel like they could do it in a really tasteful way. For I'm her. down with it being Maddie, so long as ABC does not make it something that's like. And is she gonna finally do? It? Is she gonna have her guy and finally get to have sex? Like, if they don't talk about sex, then I'm like, whatever. But I can't imagine Maddie. If Maddie's telling, if Maddie's telling, um. Um, Peter that she was compromising being in a situation watching her guy make out with a bunch of women how she's not going to be down to make out with a bunch of dudes right like what is that going to look like actually you know what maybe there'll be no kissing and she'll be like I will find my husband and she'll find somebody Jesus I don't (laughs) really want to watch it sorry Madison I would much rather watch yeah, I guess Kelsey, that name's getting thrown around. I'd yeah, watch Kelsey. The name's Kel I mean, and it would line up with at least like Hannah's where we had the arc of her going from being like the hot mess like Hannah Brown was to um and a lot of people were like Team Kaylin, not Hannah. And same thing with Kelsey. People liked Hannah hey, Ann I over got, Kelsey. I got the arc. I liked Kelsey. We ended up liking Kelsey. She's very emotional. I feel like, you know, and she's older. She's twenty eight. So, you know. The, the guys wouldn't be babies. Interesting. Interesting. Anyway. Well, here we are next week. And uh, I'm just, yeah, pins and needles, baby. Pins and needles. Well, thanks for tuning in, Broads. And, thanks, uh, Broads. What was that? Sticking with us. Two, two and a half hour recap for a two hour episode? Only 220. A cool oh. 220. <laughs> All right. All right, Broads. Love you, Broads. Love Chat ya. soon. <laughs>